Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for uh, Wednesday, March 20th. First order, uh, Mr. Pinio, do we have a need for non-public this evening? Uh, we do, Mr. Chairman, under employment and reputation. Thank you. I'd like to start off by uh, welcoming uh, Paul O'Brien back to the Board of Selectmen. He was here before and took a reprieve and back again. I'd like to welcome, welcome Paul and welcome probably Paul. at the same time take a minute just to thank uh, Luke for the years of service that he provided with the, with the Board of Selectmen also. So thank you. Uh, next on our agenda, consideration of minutes for February 28th. We have any comments, questions on those? These are the public minutes on the 28th. Yes. Uh, move to accept the minutes of the 28th. I'll second. Motion by Brian, seconded by uh, Linda. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One abstention, please. And one abstention. Next are minutes of March 6th. I think one thing on it, if these are the right ones here, the date is not on the top of the minutes, is it? No, I, saw? And I had that too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> First thing, but it's, yeah. yes. So we'll add the date of March 6th to the... Any other? Yeah, I have on not page nine, and it's the one, two, third uh, time. It says Mrs. Murray, and it says the Libby, and I think it should say Dr. Libby's will. Yes. Is what needs to go there. It was. Okay. Uh, And also, um, when it's saying Mr. Harriman opens the public hearing, it should be um, the Libby trustees meeting. Was, weren't we in the in the meeting at that point? Yes. Yes, we were meeting as the Libby trustees. Open the Correct. public part of, and I think it should be the same, the Libby Museum trustees. trustees. Now yep. she's got a line going down there. Yep. Those are, the, those are the two I have. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion for those minutes. I move to accept them as amended, the minutes of um, March, March 6th. 6th. <laughs> okay. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll abstain. And one abstention. We have a couple of public hearings this evening. Let's see, Wolfboro Board of Selectmen <clears throat> hold a public hearing on uh, March 20th to consider a temporary event permit for the New England Lyman Group to host 25th annual boat show at the Town Docks and Community Bandstand on June 8th, 2024 from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Permit number 2024-22. Is Hi. Hi, I'm Betsy Bryant. I'm on the board of directors for the New England Lyman Group, as well as the show co-chair, along with my husband. Um, we've given you a package. It's basically the same that we do every year. We would like to have the New England, excuse me, the New Hampshire Boat Museum have their display as they normally do, uh, the Marine Patrol, and possibly one other wooden boat vendor. I've got sent basically the information that we had from previous years. Did you have any questions? I don't want to take much of your time. Okay. At this time, I'll open up the public hearing. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments on this event? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Board members, any questions, comments? I would entertain a motion. I'll move to issue a temporary event permit to New England Lyman Group to host the 25th annual boat show at the Town Docks and Community Bandstand on June 8th, 2024 from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. Permit number 2024-22. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You're all set. Thank you. Thanks. Next public hearing, uh, Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on uh, March 20th to consider a temporary event permit for the New Hampshire TBF Elite Series to hold a bass tournament at the town docks, the back and the back bay town docks, on July 16th, 2024, from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Permit number 2024-23. Do we have anybody here to speak to this one? Don't see anybody here. Um, I did get some clarity when it says back bay, and that's using the back bay boat launch ramp. Just it, to get the people in and out yeah, on the, yeah, onto the lake. Yep. It, and they're only going to be 15 boats. It's not a very right. large event. All right. And I think they, I don't know if I noticed in here that they were told that the best parking area for the boats and trailers afterwards would right. be down on the uh, Glendon Street lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, at this time, you know, everybody's heard it's basically an access point for a bass tournament, fishing tournament, on uh, July 10th. And I'll open up a public hearing if anybody has any questions or comments for this uh, event. Uh, last year when I was down at that the back bay docks the railing is just about falling off I don't know if it's been fixed, but you might someone might want to go down and take a look at that before You know okay. you have an event like that yep. everything was getting real rickety down there Just a, yep. just wanted to mention that just take your name for the record if you would Jody uh, Jody person. Thank you. Yeah, hey, Jody. Yeah, we'll we'll look into that. I have that looked at and Any other questions or comments from the public? Seeing that will close the public hearing, board members, what would we wish to do with this? Um, I did also, I'm going to um, parlay on top of Jody. Um, I did have, in the last, say, six months, I've had two people come to me, citizens, and say that the, um, there were even some boards on the town docks that are getting a little weak and rotted. I walked it, and it didn't seem that bad to me. I've seen a lot worse old rickety docks. But um, when we look at the railing, maybe we should have... You know, look at the dock too. Look at the dock yeah. as, Structure. A, as a yeah. whole. See if mm. there's anything else that's an issue yeah. Yeah. before the season starts. Yeah, right. Yeah. Very definitely. We've mm. got all the other information here. Their insurance certificate is with it and stuff. Um, yeah, looks good. The department heads have uh, signed off on yeah. it. So, it so move to issue a temporary event permit for the NHTBF Elite Series host a bass tournament at the town docks, Back Bay. On July 16, 2024, from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., permit number 2024-23. Second. Motion by Brian, seconded by Paul. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next on our agenda is the bulk vote. We have uh, two weekly manifests, uh, one dated March 8th for $224,977. One dated March 15th for $193,772 and one uh, property tax uh, credit exemption with us here. So I'd entertain a motion on the bulk vote. I move that we approve the bulk vote A and B. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian to approve the bulk vote. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. And one abstention. Okay, next on the agenda, we have uh, board committee appointments, and I believe, Linda, did you want to make yes. a... Yeah. I, I would like to table these appointments. Um, the uh, announcement of these openings are to be in the paper on um, March 21st and 28th, with the deadline of March 29th to have uh, people who would like to yep. fill in these uh, yep. positions to the Board of Selectmen, and yep. it says on it, that we will um, make appointments on April 3rd, 2024, and I'd like to follow that announcement, and I'd like it tabled. I move to have this tabled. Second. Motion by Lignan, seconded by Paul, to table this to our next, uh, the April 3rd meeting. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Also announced uh, at this time, normally we, uh, we do our um, committee assignments for the, for the Board of Selectmen here and also elect the, the chairman and, and officers for uh, this coming year. And with Dave not being here, we decided to hold off till our April 3rd meeting when we have a full board here with us to, uh, to do that. So Brad, be... I would, um, I'd like to also backtrack a little bit. And on the, um, on the appointments, committee appointments, I think that we should reinforce that we would like to have the members come in front of the board, um, not because we really need them here for our purposes, but I think that the community should be able to put a face with a name for anybody who's um, going to be approved to be on a committee. I agree. Yeah. Me too. Okay. Next on the agenda, some new business. We have a, uh, a barge permit application for up at the Libby, Libby Dock from Beckwith Builders. I'm going to just slide back from the table. My son works for Beckwith okay. Builders. What are you going to do? We have the uh, permit here. We have certificate of insurance. The check has been, he has paid the fee for the season. Everything's in order here, so. Okay. Got it. Any uh, any questions or comments from the board, or which how the board like to act? I would like to move to approve the um, barge loading and unloading permit for Beckwith Builders Incorporated. Second that for the Libby Dock. Oh, for the Libby Dock. For the Libby Dock. Okay. Motion by uh, Brian, seconded by Paul. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. One abstention. You gotta, you gotta eat the microphone yeah. just about there. I have to Paul. eat the microphone. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Bad visual. All right, I'll do that. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. Next on the agenda, the discussion for our budget, actual versus uh, budget for February 2024. Oh, um, on my agenda, B is December of 23. Would you like February or December? 23, you're right. Sorry okay. about that. No problem. I just... I jumped down, nope. but okay. skipped a line. All right. All right. Um, Catherine Carpentier, Finance Director. <clears throat> I'm here before you to deliver the December 2023 preliminary financial report. Mm -hmm. I've given you documents of appropriations and revenues for the month ended December 31st, 2023. The general fund operating budget is at 99.3% expended. There are still some entries to be done before the books are closed by the auditors. It is anticipated that we will not need to borrow funds from the electric fund as approved. As you know, in November, the town manager instituted a spending freeze and the department heads minimized fourth quarter spending. Transfers were done and there were no unforeseen events, so we covered the unfunded portion of $148,183 of the town roads worn article. Uh, the general funds were um, came in at 103%, which is great. Uh, we might not stay at that number if um, between management and the auditors we decide to adjust some of our reserves. Uh, overall, at the skin of our teeth, we came in um, under budget and a little over revenue at this point before final entries by the auditors. Uh, the water fund was 97% uh, expended, returned 52000 the electric fund was at 100%, returned 41,000. Sewer fund is at 102%, which was 200 and, I can't read my own writing, 270,000, 27,000 over, and Pop Whalen is 94,000 over at 123%. Uh, water fund revenues is at 108%, with water charges at 109. The electric fund is at 102, sewer fund is at 105%, with residential sales at 92% and Pop Whalen was at 80%, which is an $80,000 um, miss on the revenues. <clears throat> um, the wastewater treatment plant uh, was a little under budgeted with the contractual increase that was missed in the 23 budget. And also there were a lot of um, repairs at Pop Whalen, why the overspending there. I also included, as usual, your donation reconciliation and a capital reserve fund planning document. Um, today, um, Selectman Murray called me and also asked me a couple questions on some of the reports or at one question and um, with that I uh, distributed today to you um, a copy of all of the eight line item transfers that were done during the year 
Um, the biggest two were done after the um, DRA budget freeze. Um, and so there's a lot of numbers in the third column of the, of the reports that you see where money's coming in and out, and that was trying to fund the uh, town road upgrades project. Mm -hmm. um, you did just get that today because it was requested today. If you have any questions today or by next week, I'd be more than happy to entertain them. And I want to thank you <clears throat> for getting that. It gave me, I was looking through the budget and there was a $55,000 transfer out of the town um, uh, le mm -hmm. and, and town engineer. And so I, I thank you for giving me this and uh, making it easier to see this report. Um, I think you electronically got it and paper copy. So if you have any questions, you can let me know because you haven't had time to digest it. Are there any questions on December 2023 preliminary actual versus budget and financial reports? Paul? Yeah. Um, hi, Casey. Um, Good evening. Audit, auditors start when? Um, looking at my calendar in my head, April 22nd, if that's a Monday. They're here that whole week. Um, but that's just called field work, and then they do more work, and they're supposed to deliver to us uh, a final audit report by the end of July. So between the end of April and the end of July, they'll do stuff, they'll do work at, you know, at the office, they'll do entries, they'll give me final entries, and I'll get a draft report. And then so we'll, the end of July is probably a is hopeful what, kind of set the, of dates? That is what the contract says. However, we all know that they missed that deadline last yeah. year. So. I tried to get them to commit this year. They said they'll do the best they can. So. Okay. All right. So that's that's a that's a marker date that I, at least I personally am going to. I think we all ought to wait with an anticipation for. Um, as it seems to me we. Well, we'll learn a lot from the audit, and that's I guess I'll just park it there. It's good. End of July. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments for Casey on this one? All right, we'll move on to the actual, the February 2024 20, budget now. Um, monthly, with the exception of January, I come to you with monthly reports. So I just want to disclose that this is February 2024th. Um, so it is comparing actuals to the proposed budget, because at this point in time, the default budget was not in play. So the numbers will be adjusted for March. Um, the appropriations and revenues report for month end February 29th is for the proposed budget. The general fund operating budget is currently at 23 expended. Um, if everything was linear, two months would be 16.7%. We always see a little spike because some, there's some blanket POs and stuff um, that are processed at the beginning of the year. Uh, next month, as I stated, the 24 budget will change to the approved budget representing the default budget. The default budget um, was established in the December-January time frame and posted. Um, so it is all set and we will be going to that number that was approved by the selectmen and reported to the Department of Revenue. Um, the town manager is working with department heads to make re recommendations for line item transfers mm -hmm. to cover items that will be underfunded. So we are going to have to make, even though the default is set, we will need to make um, some transfers in and out to different things to cover unfunded projects that need to be um, our priority. For example, um, the welfare has gone up. We overspend it in 2023, and now mm -hmm. it's gone back to 22's level. So, mm -hmm. we'll, you know, we're, we're going to have to find 20,000 to increase that line item because we have to, to uh, do that service. That's just one example. So in the next few months, the um, town manager is working with department heads trying to find areas um, excess funds that can be shifted to priorities. Uh, to continue on, the general fund revenue as of February is only at 3%, um, but that's going to remain that way until the first tax bills go out in June. Uh, water fund is 25% expended, electric fund 22%, sewer fund 70%, again because that has the whole wastewater treatment operation and maintenance contract. Pop Whalen's at 53%, but that's because we're waiting on a donation um, to come in um, for the locker rooms. Uh, water fund revenue is at 14%, electric is at 19, sewer is at 14%, and Pop Whalen is at 5%. Uh, Pop Whalen revenue is always at a month lag, so it's going to always look a little um, less because we bill out when the stuff happens and they get 30 days to pay. <clears throat> Are there any questions for February 2024? Uh, Casey, uh, the, uh, the encumbrance or the donation anticipated from the Pop 
Uh, that's July, or is it uh, ongoing? Um, it, the, the final payment is due by, I think it's June or July. I'm July, not sure. something June, like that, yeah. June 30, yeah. July 1st, yeah. in that time frame. Yeah, but they have been making uh, approximately $50,000, $55,000 by week, every other two weeks payments. So as they get the money in, as they promised, they've been given it, and they, um, they have been paid. And no indication that uh, there'll be a, a, a shortage, a, a miss? I don't believe so, and I don't believe I'd be the one to know that. Anybody? Uh, no indication to be a shortage or a miss? No indication to my knowledge. I, I just would clarify. Speak up. The, the, Swallow the microphone. The, <laughs> the donation that is referred to in this report is about the upfitting of a locker room through a donation, which is separate than the $2.7 million dollars. Uh, I had correspondence with Brewster earlier this week. Uh, that donation should be coming in within the week to help uh, level that account. So while we're on the subject, then, is the big don't we'll call it the big donation. Is that on schedule? No. As far as I know, it's on okay. schedule for uh, July, right? July like, time frame, July, I believe it like was. That. Okay. Thank you. I, I believe we heard somebody say, uh, one of the members, that they'd like to be done way before that. And so I think... Yeah. Yeah, well, that would, would be great. They would do that if the monies are, are in no, their hands. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks. Thanks, Casey. Well, All right. Next one, Casey here, the Pop Whalen Financial Review. Uh -huh. um, this was a new ask, I think, by the Board of Selectmen to give a Pop Whalen um, budget and snapshot review of spending activities for 2024. <laughs> I will put this in my normal monthly report, but for the first time I thought it should be a separate agenda item. So. As of February 2024, <clears throat> um, I gave you the budget and how the budget was divided um, based on ice time rental, what we hope to get for curling, senior men's hockey, she wolves, there's a whole list, figure skating. Um, so that was just the budgeted document was the first one. The second one is uh, results as of February 24. So as of February 24, we've taken in 20,000. Again, that's probably about one month's worth of revenues, even though it's February. And then um, we've spent 211, again, 117 of that is for the Brewster locker, locker room fit out that we'll get the donation for, so that'll level itself out. Um, I also was asked to give you 2023's report, which I also did, um, and I believe I fulfilled your, your ask. Is there, if there's anything you're missing or if you have any questions, uh, I'd be I, more than happy to add I it. I would just you. add that this is a report that the board asked for. This is version one. I know that there are things yep. in here that the board want to see additional. We'd love to take that input now because we're having a meeting tomorrow with the director to be able to uh, formulate and add those items in. Linda. Yeah, I, I would like to know the number of hours booked, like for March. How many hours do we have booked for usage? How many hours do we have booked for April? Uh, so we can tell where we are. Um, I also would like to know um, for any of the summer programs, anything we have booked. You know, so if we're going to have some kind of event, we know that that is there. Mm -hmm. um, I, this is fine, but it's really, we've got to pick up the use. Spring, summer, and fall. And without that, the budget isn't going to make. So we've got to put a lot of emphasis on that. And I think we need to see Brent? those figures. Yeah. Brent? So, if yeah, I could just ask, so, so in a perfect world, had, this would have also included what you're asking for is number of hours booked for March and April as of February, right? Yeah. Or as of today, yeah. right? Right, mm -hmm. for here, but I also want a projection for the next month. Yeah. I think what I want to look at is saying where we fell down was we didn't have enough in the spring and the summer and fall. So I want to know what we have booked and what we're short. So we'll know what we're short. We probably should know how many uh, hours we need to book per month to make the, the, the budget. Meet, meet our goal, yeah. Yeah, right. because that's what we're going, we yeah, want, really want to know. Okay. No, Brian, go first. Um, right, Brian. So a question I have is on town ice rental. So we rent $100,000, $100,705 in ice, which is um, more than Back Bay or Kingswood or Brewster. Um, I'd like to see how much revenue we get back from that ice that we rent. 
Um, to, so, so maybe we can see if there are blocks that are really underutilized. And I know it's not prime time ice that we rent out. It might not be available for the um, curling group or for the high schools or whatnot. But maybe we could find um, other people to rent the ice that is underutilized yeah. by the town. I don't want to take it away from the public either, but if we know which okay. hours they use the most, then that might be an idea. Can we, can we repurpose some of this rental ice? Um, Fred? But my understanding is those hours are town-sponsored events right. that Correct. equal the $100,000. Right. So you'd want to take away... I, I heard no, no, don't want no, to take them away. I, I want to know what we get back for revenues for those, because when, when okay. people go in to, to do um, public skate or right. stick right. and puck, they, they pay the rink right. for that amount. So we're buying $100,000 worth of ice. Are we getting back 5000 10000 20000 right. or 30000 towards right. that? Yep. And are there hours where the ice is just vacant? and yep. it's not sitting there, could we utilize it for another group, potentially? I don't know. Brad? Paul. Thanks. Um, so I'm new to this uh, income statement, um, and, and I, I respect uh, that we want to have that level of detail, but I'd, I'd hope that Chuck is going to tell us how this thing works. That's what I would hope. Um, and, I, and I say that because it's his job. Um, so I, I, I would really like us to ask him to tell us what he needs to what he needs to know in order to bring this thing to a break-even point of view. In 2024, we have to generate 400 and 408 thousand. Is that kind of the number? We got to generate yeah. 408 grand in order to make this thing break-even. And plus or minus, but you know it's it's in the it's in the range. Right now, as I look at this on a run rate basis, which is unfair, but it's what we got on a run rate run rate basis, we ain't getting close. And and Jim, you know, pointed out to us that he's going to meet with Chuck tomorrow, and and I, I agree with Linda as well. We need to see a calendar. What's going to show up? How much revenue we think we're going to get? That would all be super. Um, because we, we know where we've been, and this is thank you for doing this, Casey. We know where we've been with these numbers. I think it's important that people want to know where we're going, because if we don't make this thing uh, come across the finish line on a on a net neutral basis, it's coming off the balance sheet. We're just going to pull money off the balance sheet that we could use to, for other purposes. So I'm I'm looking forward to hearing from Chuck on uh, how we're going to how we're going to move this thing forward. And I and I. Really appreciate though the clarity that you put together in these uh, in these income statements. It's, it's important to do this one. This is a big investment, and I'm glad we're gonna we're gonna take the time to look deeply into it. Thank so, you. So, so I've kind of heard six different has. requests, and I I, yeah. I believe um, that five of them. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> The five of them are for the director to answer, and that would be only best. one of them um, seems to be of a financial, uh, which would be the town um, revenue. I mean, what's where? I mean, the town expense versus the uh, revenue we're bringing in for the town sponsored events. That could be a financial thing. I add to my spreadsheet. I think I've made notes, and Jim and I are meeting with uh, the director tomorrow, yeah. and we'll relay the other five um, planning planning items. Is what you've asked for there more so fi than financial. Mm -hmm. We get it up on a website, and we can tell people who are having events in the summertime, and they can queue up to bring the family. That, that's the kind of, I think that's what we were told we were going to get. And so we just need to, without being punitive, I mean, we just need to say, okay, how do we help get that? That's all. And, and with that, we're looking at the advertising. Yeah, uh, the right. Advertising, and I think that we have to look at, as the board, the whole picture. I agree. Yep. So Completely you, agree. What did you say, Linda? You, you, the board need, needs to look at advertising? Well, advertising. There, you know, I went on Facebook and I saw that there's a three-on-three -three tournament that's going to take place on March 30th. I have seen nothing to talk about yeah. when pickleball is going to be coming up and what's going forward. And that's the kind of advertisement I'm looking for, not right. so much your financial. Yeah, but the programs, if we're going to have the programs, we need the advertisement yeah. and the promotion. You, I was copied on that email that you sent to the town manager, okay. and that's why we uh, set up a meeting with um, the director for tomorrow. Perfect. So, 
Um, again, if there's any other financial um, questions, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Casey. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you, Casey. All right. Next on our agenda, the hazard mitigation plan update. Hi, Tom Zotti, Fire Chief, Emergency Management Director. Um, just wanted to kind of take a chance to bring everybody up to speed on where we are and the emergency management side of the house, if you will. Um, we are well into the process of updating both the town's emergency operations plan and the Hatterson mitigation plan. Uh, Deputy Chief Nichols is spearheading the emergency operations plan update. I've been working on the hazard mitigation plan. Um, before I go any further, please, if I accidentally drop into a bunch of acronyms, stop me and I, I'll explain it because we're dealing with the state and the feds and there's a lot of acronyms. Um, those updates, both of these are, are required to keep the town eligible for things such as what I'll touch on here in a bit. One of the uh, grants that uh, we've applied for and are this close to receiving, we learned today, um, towards the cost of the new generator and the uh, upfit of the Emergency Operations Center at the Public Safety Building. Um, it also keeps us eligible for acronym FEMA reimbursements for disaster damage. As you're probably aware, we recently received a reimbursement of $118,000 plus or minus for the December 2022 storm right before Christmas. And the paperwork has been filed for the July 2023 storm. Um, I checked the status today. It's still at the federal level. But if we're successful, um, we're looking at north of a million two, mostly public works projects for road washouts and those sort of things. Um, as far as the emergency operations plan, as you recall, we asked for that money to be added to the emergency management budget during the budget process at the end of the year. Um, there is no committee work involved, but on the hazard mitigation plan, um, we'd like to be able to appoint a business representative and a member of the general public representative. And with your approval, I would start the process of uh, making those positions uh, known and available and we can either um, vet them in-house and make a recommendation to you as a board or pass any applications we get to you for your consideration. Um, we'd like to move relatively swiftly so if, uh, if it's okay with the board we'll, we'll get started on that process and uh, come back to you with either recommendations or a list of names of people who've expressed interest. Um, the, that process will involve a couple of meetings. It won't be a lot. We've been able to put together a lot of this via email and um, through interaction with different department heads and so forth. We're trying to minimize meetings that drag on and tend to be endless. Um, we did receive notice uh, late this afternoon that the uh, emergency management performance grant, which is the one for the generator and the upfit of the EOC at the Public Safety Building. Um, believe it or not, there was a historical aspect to that. It was a piece of a file this thick. That was approved at the federal level. The next step, I've asked Amy to put us on the agenda for your 4-3 meeting, where we will ask you to approve the grant agreement documents with the state uh, and sign them, at which point it'll be reviewed again at the Department of Safety. Um, and then go to governor and council for final approval. We would be on the receiving end of just over $102,000. The town's match is the money we've actually raised for the project. Um, uh, so kind of a side note, um, Deputy EMD Paul Whalen, who's here, um, has been spearheading our um, efforts at a community emergency response team or CERT team. Um, we have technically had one since about 2019. Um, it's registered, approved, and so forth. We had some technical glitches at the state level where if you went on the state website and searched for a local team, it didn't show up. Then COVID hit and it kind of took a back seat. Um, we're hoping to do, I'll call it a slow roll, um, to kind of gauge interest and so forth. The state covers the cost of things like background checks and so forth. So to the best of my knowledge, these folks 
would be true volunteers at minimal or no cost to the town. We're meeting with directors of a CERT team on the other side of the lake and some other folks to try to make sure we have our hands around this before we go too far. Um, the county has a CERT team. Several of those members live in Wolfboro, and we're kind of hoping to double dip a little bit. Um, my vision is to create a group of trained people who could operate a shelter for us if we got into a long-term situation or a power outage in the wintertime where we had to open a, a town building, perhaps, and, and be able to staff it. Um, beyond that, if we get to the point where they could help with planned events, July 4th, traffic, things like that, um, other emergencies that may come along. My, my goal is to kind of crawl, crawl, walk, run. Just I'd rather go slowly and get it right than bite off more than we can chew and not be able to support the program. So we're kind of, I'll say, slow rolling it. Um, we've got the, the technical goods straightened out, so if you do a search now, we come up. Um, and uh, we're going to kind of go from there. We're also participating in the school district's tabletop exercise at the school tomorrow afternoon. Um, I, I'm not 100% I'm not familiar with their expectations. I believe we would be doing a simulated emergency and kind of recreating what would happen at various schools and offering our input and so forth. Um, so I guess the takeaway is one, we'd like to be able to move forward to, to uh, fill those two volunteer positions and two, um, to kind of give you the heads up that we'll be coming on the third um, with the paperwork and the background material, so you hopefully accept that grant and we can move it on to the next step. I'd be happy to try, it's a lot, but I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that you Brad? might have. Paul. Jim, you, you good with this? This yep. good? You're good? Absolutely. Okay, good. Just, just checking. <laughs> we didn't want to turn away money they were willing to give us. So. You didn't want to turn away what? <laughs> money they were willing to give us. <laughs> well, hanging fruit, good. Any questions or comments for Tom? No, makes a lot of sense. Do you, I guess you need a motion? Yes. Um, I move that we approve uh, two positions for the hazard mitigation group, one from business and one from the general public. Second. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Paul. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Chief. Thank you, Chief. Next on the agenda, Municipal Electric Department for the Reggie rebate Barry. reimbursement. Barry. Barry. Good evening. Barry Muccio, Wolf Electric Department. I'm here for my annual request of the board to allow us to reimburse our great rate payers, monies accumulated um, as part of the Reggie program. So at this time, we've accumulated, a little, I don't know, I think it's 278,000 and some change mm -hmm. is our intent to provide a rebate of 0 0.017 kilowatt hours per month for our rate payers for the months of April, May, and June to get that fund back down to approximately $4,000. So as you are aware, to be able to participate in the Reggie program, we basically agree, as mandated, that monies we collect have to be reimbursed to our ratepayers at 100%. So this is the formula, the format in which we are able to accomplish that. So basically, I'm looking for your, for your stamp of approval to reimburse those monies. We have the billing office. Brenda LaPointe is um, on board to accomplish that in the billing office, commencing for all meters read in April through June, so. Yeah, and also just to put it in terms too for everybody, it would result in an, uh, an average of $10.20 per month for the typical rate payer for the three months that we're doing this. That's so. correct, so. Very good. You get $30 in the course of uh, three months for people that use uh, five to 600 kilowatts hours a month. Mm -hmm. The news always gets better and better from the electric department. Remember that, right? <laughs> yeah. Can I make a motion? Yes. Move to approve the Reggie rebate mm -hmm. April 2024 through June 2024 mm -hmm. at 0 0.017 kilowatt hours. Second. 
Motion by uh, Brian, seconded by I'll Paul. Give it to Paul. Yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I, I do Thank have a Barry. question for Barry. Yes. Um, by the way, it's, it's great seeing you again. Um, yeah, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Uh, so last time I, I dropped in on uh, MED, you were you were selling 77 million, roughly kilowatt hours, and you're down to 72. We're that's down, what I you mean, as of 2024. That's what I looked at yeah, on the register. We're down thing. a little bit. Yeah. Is that because of your? Um, it's been pretty mild. It's been a mild <laughs> winter. I thought you were going to say it was because of all this nifty stuff you put well, up. I could was, take. Credit Take credit for, for that, that would you too? Mother yeah. Nature is a is a big component in our electric usage. So, mild winter is really our number one reason. That's a lot, though. That's that's almost eight percent. Yeah, a, that's a lot. It fluctuates. We have, if we have a hot summer, we'll be right okay. back. Trust me. Okay. Thanks. So, <laughs> yep. Take care. Thank you. Keep Thanks, selling. Okay. Next on the agenda: seasonal water line piping. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think you recall that um, we've got a long-standing uh, issue related to seasonal water lines. Um, we're coming in front of you to initiate a conversation. Um, the fact of the matter is a lot of these seasonal water lines, uh, it will be impossible to be able to provide uh, year-round secure water, uh, as we learned uh, on a couple of roads this year that we intended to bring to the warrant. Mm -hmm. um, we have provided the memo outlining um, the fact that we have this problem, and I believe you also re received an attachment to that memo that lays out um, all of our seasonal water lines, which we have mm -hmm. approximately 200 of, and uh, a letter from the state uh, recommending a path forward for a transition. Um, we're looking to work with the board to get some guidance on this so that we can make these transitions in a timely fashion. And I think Steve may have a few more details on the concept for you. Steve? Uh, Steve Randall, Public Works. So as uh, Jim said, we have about 200 seasonal line customers spread out throughout the course of town. Some private roads, some off of public roads, uh, dead-end roads, um, cross-country lines. I can't quantify the amount of mileage of pipe we have um, at this point. It is quite substantial. So the sanitary survey that I uh, attached to this was done um, last November. And this has been an ongoing thing from them. And one of the, one of the highlights in there under the distribution um, says the system includes thousands of feet of seasonal water mains. Uh, typically small diameter plastic pipes, shallow barrier laid on top of the ground, direct access to the meter, shut off valve, and in one location, simple tap. Um, seasonal water lines increase potential risk for contamination of the water system. They either need to be replaced with water mains constructed to current industry and New Hampshire DES standards or removed from water service to those homes terminated. So from a cost perspective, uh, in order to upgrade all of this to current industry and DES standards would be in the multi-millions. Um, it costs us an exorbitant amount of time and money every year to maintain them um, for what we get back for return. So from my perspective at this point, um, I think we should terminate them, come up with a time frame to let the people know that this is going to happen. A lot of people are aware of this. This is a conversation that's predated me, that a lot of the, that my predecessor had with a lot of the seasonal waterline customers. So it's not news to them. And we just come up with a path to this is what we're going to do, and this is when we're going to do it. So are we looking at wells? That's up to them. It's not our responsibility to supply them water. So they can either put a well in, they could, um, if they wanted to pay to tie into town water, they could just like anybody else does. As long as you have a facility nearby. Correct. They would have to get to it. So however that works, or a well. Linda. Yeah, I counted that there are 10 of these that are town property. Mm -hmm. And I think we should also have a cost analysis of what it's going to cost the town to convert those 10 
to um, the water line. Yep. Um, because a lot of those, so Albee Beach is a perfect example. So that's, you know, our bathhouse and stuff there, which is on a seasonal line. From our cost perspective, it would be cheaper for the town to put a well in right. at Albee Beach than it would be to extend the main down, all the way down underneath, down by the boat museum, out to Albee Beach. Yeah, so it's much more cost effective for us to sink wells for town properties in a lot of these instances. Well, we got the two cemeteries out mm -hmm. on um, Middleton, Road. Middleton Road. There's something, and we've got stuff at um, 87 Clark Road, mm -hmm. um, Goodrich. So they're going to have costs, and I'd like to have some kind of yep. uh, cost analysis done on what that's going to cost us. Um, it seems to me that the cost to the whole tax pay, to tax, well, I guess all water users would be the ones who would get hit. Right. The enterprise if we did, one would take the hit. The enterprise right? would yeah. take the hit. It right. would be the other users that would have to help foot this. Um, so I, so can we also get an estimated cost of how much it would be for somebody to put in a well? What are we asking? We asking five thousand, ten thousand, twenty, thirty. You we know. can, but a lot of that depends on where they are too. What yep. the ground is like, Tons. if it's yeah. you know. But yes, we could get an average artesian well price from a few companies and a range, so people have an idea. Okay. Steve, one thing too. Um, so the properties that Linda just mentioned, like you know cemeteries, and down at uh, the end of Clark Road, I think that was what McKinney Park was. That, there's, I think there's one, one down there. Yeah. Does the DES um, requirement, you know, wanting us to eliminate these seasonal water lines, just to not necessarily you know, put them down six feet of cover, they basically want them buried to a certain extent to protect them. Freeze so in right? some of our properties, like a cemetery or something like that, if we just, what is, is it a possibility to possibly to put it in maybe a foot or two deep? To yep. get it there, still be seasonal. It have to be drained in the winter time, but yes. we still be able to supply water to yeah, some cool. of these. Yes, sites. I think for cemeteries and things like that, that's perfectly a reasonable yep. option. Yep. Okay. Just thought. You know, yeah. No, I yep. think that's a great thought. Yep. Uh, Paul. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Um, so the hypothesis here is we have this whole bunch of seasonal water lines that someone DES is saying those are probably not the safest, healthiest things on the planet. And uh, uh, we want to get those buried. And if somebody wants to connect to the water mains, as long as it's nearby, they can do that. And they'll pay a water main connection charge. So you'd come forward and say, they will pay the same water main connection charge as I would pay if I were right next to it and building a new house. Correct. OK. And, um, but then I heard a carve out question. But if we have a cemetery, could we bury it six feet underground and get away with it? Well, what if, uh, what if a resident says, hey, listen, uh, uh, I'll do the same thing? Well, I, I'm not asking you to give yeah. me an answer. I'm just, I'm, you know, every time, we, every time you make a little exception, mm -hmm. you create a new rule. And so, um, and, and Linda, Linda's exactly right. How, however this comes out, the, the water fund is going is gonna, is gonna to get the benefit of all this cost, right? So... Um, Hey, if the hypothesis holds true that these things are na can be nasty and they're not good and the cost to maintain and all of that, if all that pans out, sure, we should do something. But I think a little more thinking around carve-outs, because mm -hmm. we got to be really careful about, well, how come I didn't get carved out mm -hmm. when I got carved in? You know, just, just think that through a little bit. Right. So, so from what I heard, Steve, I heard that you have, there's a separation for what we can do in a cemetery town property compared to what a residential person would be doing. And I think what I heard from you is that the cost of us maintaining the seasonal water lines almost outweighs or yeah. doesn't allow for a lot of money in return from their usage. Right. No. Yeah, that, that, I think I heard the same thing. Yeah. But I also heard that there is uh, uh, there's some issues with health and safety there too. So that oh, very much so. That, I mean, yeah, it, okay. it's, it it comes from a health and safety standpoint first, cost second. I got it. DESIs. Right. No, I think I think that's right. Thank you. Any other questions for Steve on this? So, if I'm understanding you correctly, um, we'll go ahead and formulate a little more of a refined plan. Um, come back to you 
and potentially schedule um, a public hearing yeah. on, on the matter for that those people sense. who may be uh, affected by this to come on board. I, I think it would note as well, um, while at this time the big takeaway for DES is that we continue moving forward yes. with the project. Yeah. There is not a drop-dead date for transition. We just need to continue to show continued uh, offboarding of some of these seasonal water lines right. moving forward. And what I can do is I'll get I'll work on well prices. I'll look at um, some more information as far as the town properties go to make sure that it's mm -hmm. we don't run into yep. 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 an yep. issue of we can do one thing and they have to do another. Yep. And, you know, maybe look at how we would phase it over the five years. Maybe would we go to one section first or, you know, give us a full yeah, plan. What's the staging of it? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. I'm just uh, going to stand yeah, here yeah. for a while. <laughs> He's not going Next on the agenda, the South Main Street Water Project. Reintroduce yourself. <laughs> I'm not going to do that every time. Um, so South Main, this is just a quick update. Uh, we signed the contracts on Thursday of last week with Dawson's Excavation mm -hmm. to start the South Main Water Project. Mm -hmm. They are looking to put shovel in the ground around the first of the month. Um, Stan Tech will be here on your April 3rd meeting to give a more in-depth presentation of um, phasing construction. And then at that time, we're working on getting ready to schedule another stakeholder meeting and to go through those steps to get the public more involved. Yep. Linda. Yeah, well, at that meeting, um, they also tell us their detour routes. Yes. Because the sooner we could get that out and people thinking about how they're going to work their stuff around so, this area. Oh, the I, working, I will tell you. I didn't hear what you said. Uh, detour routes. Oh, detour routes. Okay, so thanks. I will tell you right now the working model is two-way traffic all times. <laughs> but still, I think there are going to be yes. people who are going to want to yes. have other routes, and there is another way around town. Yes, there is. And we should... Yep. have that as yep. part we of the plan. We will have the full traffic plan. They will present all of that. Okay. Yep. Great. Any other questions? Thank you, Steve. I, I do. Uh, so uh, I do, Brad. So you're going to be working on this. And I, I remember, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago, you, you, you were telling me that uh, 109A was going to get a shim code. Uh, uh, so when you're, when you're thinking about all this stuff, South Main Street and mm -hmm. people dodging up the back way to get home. I mean, are we going to, are you kind of working with those guys? So I, I have zero control of a DOT right. and when they pave, we have a rough window. They're supposed to give me 30 days notice because we have to raise covers and things like that. But yeah. I've been working with them since October on that. So I'm hoping with a little bit of luck, it'll actually happen in the middle of the summer. Oh, as long as, as, long as you got your finger <laughs> in this doing? thing so well, that yes. people, can't, yeah. people don't, you know, go nonlinear and say, I can't go there, but I can't sneak up the back way because mm -hmm. it's all gummix flummoxed up. That would be good. All right, you got it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Next on the agenda is the uh, Public Works Capital Reserve Fund for truck and the skid steer. Yes, yeah, so is this is... After our vote, uh, the capital reserve plan was approved. This is what we had yeah, put in for for uh, new uh, trucks oh, and equipment was, of this year. Okay. I have attached um, my quotes, um, contracts. I will say I have updated. I got some really good news um, yesterday from talking with the salesman for the truck. Um, they're trying to continue to have a good relationship with us. It's actually a almost a $20,000 less than what you have. So for once, I'm actually going to ask for less. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good news. So Steve. you'll see we're going to go with another international from HP Fairfield. Um, I don't know how in-depth you want me to go with as far as transmissions and things along those lines. But, you know, Cummins Motor, uh, Allison Automatic, stainless steel dump body, uh, full, full plow setup gear. And Steve, this was a pretty quick turnaround time, correct? July. We should have, uh, it's a 2025, it's being built right now, we should have it by July. I'm hoping by the parade, but that might be. <laughs> Expend expected lifespan? Uh, I have it on 11-year cycle. Yeah. And are, 
Are we getting rid of a truck? Yes, we are getting rid of HD 9. And that's what, 10, 15 years old? What's that one is 15 years old, yes. Okay, thank you. HD 2. I get 2 and 9 mixed up all the time, sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. We are, we are getting rid of that. And then the other is the skid steer that we are splitting between the highway and the water fund. Um, that is actually in stock, so as soon as we have approval and count set up and check, we will have that in service. And we are getting rid of the old HD16, the much talked about New Holland tractor. <laughs> so you're going to allocate the capital gym. as well as the OPEX? You're um, allocating both capital as well as expense? Yes. To each other? Okay. And you guys worked out a formula or something like that? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Any other questions for Steve on this? I'd entertain a motion to grant him approval to proceed with the uh, purchase. So moved. I'll second that. Any other, discuss any other discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Wait, wait a second. How about let's give him the public a little bit of an idea okay. on the amount? Aren't you supposed to put numbers on oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, Motion to approve. You want me to give him the full one? Motion to approve Public Works Equipment Capital Reserve Fund Truck $270,215 and Skid Steer $104,160. I'll second that. Now, did you say that 270 is now down to 250? It's actually 252. You, you're willing to modify your motion so to 252? Amend it to 252 good. and change, or just 252? I rounded to 252. Very good. Yeah. 252. I'll second that too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Motion second. Any other discussion? You, All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Right. Okay. All right. Next on, while Steve's still up here with us. He's going to be here for a while. <laughs> a few of them, yeah. <laughs> Steve Rogers. Excavation permits for, and licensing for the public works. So I've, I've spent quite a bit of time looking at our existing excavation permits and how we have done things in the past. Um, I wanted to update them, make them more current, and to basically hold contractors accountable for the work that they do in our roads. Um, it's a simple permit application. Um, I would like to take all the credit, but I did steal it from multiple other towns. Um, and if you see left-hand side, it's very simple, you know, all the pertinent data. Right-hand side, uh, administration fee, a two-year surety bond. So if you come and you dig in the street, you're gonna have to give us that bond so that if, it, if you do a poor job and it settles, we don't have to pay for it. You know, this is trying to get away from us as in public works and us as in the town to foot the bill for do all of the patches and everything that happens yeah, in towns. Overs. Excuse me? Do-overs. Correct. Yeah. So these numbers um, that I put on here for fees were from my experience in working in other towns mm -hmm. and what their fee structures were and I kind of thought that I came up with a fair number. Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things in a construction project, it's not a lot of money, but it's just more of a little bit of peace of mind and a little bit of something for us. Mm -hmm. so, so am I correct, the fee you're talking about is the $250 administration inspection fee? So is an administration fee, so right off the bat is $250. That would okay. cover the inspection. And then you'd have the, the surety bond on top of that. Got it. Street damage fee, which is based on square footage. And then the infrastructure damage fee, same thing. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted the public to hear that. Yeah. And what, yeah. I, what I didn't, uh, <clears throat> so the, the surety bond is, it's, it's the same, 5,000. Yeah, I just a flat bond. So it's not going to be, so if we, were, if we were redoing Pleasant Valley Road, 5,000. If we were redoing no. a small stub, no. 5,000. No, that's different. If I so had a break and it came out and my contractor dug up correct. the road. Your contractor. My contractor I got it. then. Thank right. you. I got it. That's what that's I to got cover. It. Thank you. Correct. I got it. Yeah. Apologize. I have one question in the surety bond. When we were talking to uh, the downtown grill group, they were said that it was hard to get. This is not hard to get for a contractor. No. Okay. No. Yeah, or 
I don't want to speak out of turn. If it's hard for them to get, then they probably shouldn't be doing it. That's a fair statement. Okay. That's a fair statement. <laughs> Do we I'll have any it. mechanism to um, enforce Dig Safe? Well, so Wolfboro is not a member of Dig Safe. Okay. As a town. Um, <laughs> that has been, that is the previous policy. We are looking at that as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. If we were a member of Dig Safe, we probably get a little bit more with that. But since, yeah. and, I, and I'm assuming the reason behind it is because we have our own water, we have our own sewer, we right. have our own power. Right. So that kind of, we're kind of a one stop shop <sighs> town wise in that aspect. Okay. So Dig Safe is just going to have to call the water department, the electric department, and the sewer department right. anyway. Yeah. So Barry is our uh, <laughs> resident Dig Safe person for. Yeah. High voltage, I, and yeah, you I, must be then for water. Yes, we, would we get the cost for water? You go out it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So the second part of this is licensing. Mm -hmm. I know that's a that is a new thing for Wolfboro. <clears throat> um, again, it's a it's a common practice in other municipalities. What it, what it's set to do is to just keep anybody and everybody from digging in the street. So it's not a large fee by any stretch. Um, it's, a, it's a simple fee, it's a simple process. If you're an experienced contractor and you come into town, you fill out the application, you, whichever one you wanna work on, it's good for a year. You provide three um, references of what you can do. We check them if everything is good, you're good to go. We still come out and do our inspections if you're doing a bury the water line. You can't provide the references. That still doesn't mean you would prohibit you from working. But what that means is you would need to hire or pay for one of us to be out there to monitor what you do from start to finish and basically sign off on your work all the way through. So again, we're not just letting everybody do it and we have a little bit of control over who is performing the work in our town roads. And if we have to provide a, someone to watch or inspect the whole thing, they should be, we should be pit charging for that. And essentially that's what's taking place now on a lot of our digs is we have staff on site. Correct. Overseeing which there are other things that they could be doing Correct. as opposed to so, overseeing a project right. that, a con that, right. that a competent contractor can deal with. This is trying to get away from the public works department as a whole having to do all of the work for all of this stuff and making the people that are doing, whether it be developing or right. house, or whatever it is, right. to have their contractor do it and then we just, we do our part of it and they do their part of it. Linda, you had a... Yeah, I, yeah, my feeling is I was going to ask what kind of problems we had run into, but Jim kind of took care of it, mm -hmm. saying we don't let them do it unless we're watching, so... Well, what we have run into in the past is it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. away from what we, frankly, should be doing. You know, everything that, that those, you know, that the guys go out and do for other people or things along those nature is takes away from what they do. We don't have any mechanism to recoup that back. So it's just basically trying to streamline that to get them back to doing what their job is of maintenance or, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming we need to schedule a public hearing but before we do this. And, yeah. That's and kind of what I was thinking too, yeah. 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 Yep. If, if so I could, Brad. We'd move this on to a notice for a public hearing and uh, do we need a public hearing for the to for the excavation permit part? We probably should. And that's for my own curiosity since we're coming upon that time. What of would year. be the what would be the reason you wouldn't want to have a public hearing? But I couldn't hear oh, that. Oh, I don't. I, I don't mind. What would be the reason that you'd say ah, we shouldn't have a public hearing on that? I, I don't have an issue one way or another, other than timing. I'm just curious it, because we had an excavation permit all along. This is just a advancement of it. I'm, it's more for my own edification. I think we're changing something and it has some fees. This is my personal feeling and <clears throat> we could probably get one for the April meeting. Uh, need yeah, one. I would say the second meeting in April. Um, okay. But I, I think it's because we're, we're assessing a fee. 
yeah. the people for okay. this. And I, I think because of that, it, it should be a public hearing. I, I agree. But can we do it the 3rd of April? I mean, I don't, how many days I mean, notice do we have 30 to days give? It September, should be fairly quick. April, May, it's, and November. I mean, it's, 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 it's makes, it's mainly about advertising. I think we can, okay. uh -huh. I think we can get it for the 3rd. And then that kind of helps him yeah. out on getting that. Yep. Okay. If we can we'll do that, I'd like it on the third. We'll shoot for the I third. Agree. I agree. Yep. Okay. Are there any changes that you see or would like implemented? Just like if I could have commented, it strikes me that you would, you know, th this could become a, a great opportunity to build an empire. You know, by charging fees and doing all that. But I don't hear that. What I basically hear is we have costs, we have uh, resources that should be doing things that they're supposed to be mm -hmm. doing in the first place, and we need to cover the cost, but we don't want to build we don't want to build this big monstrous thing, and we want to put that on the on the hands of people who are responsible for that. I think that's a I think that's a great idea. Well, absolutely. It's I think it's a great idea. It's not, not empire building. Yeah, empire right? building at all. It's it's basically holding people responsible for their own. As long as it work. doesn't become a a uh, and you won't let this happen, I know. As long as it doesn't become a burden, a regulatory burden to people. Actually, it's honestly this would make it easier because it's very easier easy to track license numbers and. There you um, go. Permits. Yeah, right. Once they're entered, it's the people that you can't see that are doing things. So if you if we if we travel a road, for example, and we find a patch on a road that we have nothing for, right. you, you know what I mean, or vice versa, it, it it actually makes it easier to track. We need a motion to move this along. You need a motion to move this along. No, because we'll, we'll have the public hearing. Public hearing. Okay, thank you. Okay, one more, Steve. Asset <laughs> management software. Okay, so our iWork asset management software, um, I've been working on this for quite some time as well. Um, and I think we're, we're pretty much driving it home now. I know a couple of you sat in on the presentation we had with them a couple weeks ago. Uh, a quick rundown, this, this, this program will allow us to make sure things don't get out of hand and we can't follow them. It'll help us track our costs. Um, make sure things have proper value, and it will cover pretty much anything and everything a municipality has. So it's consisted of different modules. Um, the first one is the public works package, which consists of a work management, a sign management, pavement, water and sewer management system. So the work management, to not to drag it on too long, but you have your, your managers that have access to everything. So once everything gets quantified, everything gets um, inventoried. And for example, today I saw Tavis and he mentioned there's a leak in the faucet in the ladies' room. Something as simple like that. He goes onto his computer and he goes to building maintenance. Boom. That goes to the buildings and ground. Uh, maintenance guy, and he automatically gets it on his tablet. He knows there's a link, there's a leak up here. Because, you know, now Tavis tells me while I'm down there, and I get going. I forget. And he sends me an email in three days because the sink is still leaking. By that time, Bruce will have already had it, already had it fixed, or identified if we need a plumber, and it, and it moves forward. And that can be all the way across the board. Uh, Kathy Furling gets a phone call from a water leak somewhere. She hits it, boom, it goes to Ryan, who's already on the road. He might be on the right side of town, and he picks that up right away. Bang, done. It's just, and that's just the easy part. That's just the management part. The tracking is even more. So every time we do a meter change or a culvert change, the culverts, everything, everything gets inputted in, and everything has a cost. So as the chief alluded to with our friends from FEMA, and what we have to do to track this. All this is uh, compatible with FEMA. So everything, once it's inputted once, everything that we do, we put it in, and it's one click, and it's to FEMA. Everything is all quantified. Hours, vehicles, it's all priced, it's all done. It's set up once a month so that foreman can 
email, everything, packages come to me. I know what they've done, where they've done it, and then I can turn around and forward that up to him. You know, it's just a matter of just that much better to track everything, budgeting across the board. Oh, also, um, Alton, Ossipi, Barnstead. I believe there's nine towns in New Hampshire that are using it. That's just here. There's a fleet maintenance package, which for the garage, we have storm management, um, said building management, and, and there's more modules to add if we seem fit after years. And I have a grant to pay for it. So it's, you have no, a grant no. to pay for the capital. Correct. Yep. So there will be ongoing costs associated with licensing fees, which are in the fifteen to eighteen thousand yep. dollar range per year, um, and that's unlimited seating yep. for staff. Yep. So unlimited seats. You know, people can anybody can have access to it as long Correct. as they have credentials. Correct. Mm -hmm. Can I, Brad? Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, sounds great. Uh, a few of us remember we. Try we tried to get an asset management plan <laughs> for town hall, and we almost jumped out the window trying to get that done. So yeah. it's easier said than done, and I'm sure this is dragging. I'm sure it's wonderful. I, I, you know, and as you're telling me this, I'm just going, Shh, what time in 2026 are we going to turn this up, or 27, and wh what's the name of the person that's going to populate the data structures and make sure all of that stuff doesn't get whammy whammied? So that's a technical term, but you know, it, 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 there's a lot of back office stuff that's got to go into this, right? 100%. So we have, uh, it's a 60 day implementation process from iWorks. They <laughs> do, no, they do all of the software. They get everything up and running. Yeah, right, right. The inputting of the data, so the inventories yeah. and all those things, yeah. that falls to us. Right. So each individual, in, in my particular case, each individual foreman of every single division mm -hmm. has control over their own world right. so it's their responsibility they will do this we've so you're going to put a badge meetings. on each person that has the responsibility to put stuff Correct. into this yep. and then you're going to make sure and i don't know how you do this i'm sure you'll figure it out you're going to make sure that uh, somebody just doesn't say it's friday afternoon i'm late and putting the data in i'll just kind of you know flummox it a little you're just going to have to have because it's got to be really quality stuff going in and you're going to have some real right. issues and right. i have very quality i have very quality people so what, what makes a lot of all of this work mm -hmm. is, is the crew that I have mm -hmm. and the foreman that I have that are able to function. That's without, great to hear. Without me having to do That's that. That's great to hear. So I have nothing but faith in them that they will do their part of that. Mm -hmm. Now in turn, I have to do my part. Mm -hmm. So I have to get them what they need. I have to help them and fill in as needed mm -hmm. and to make the whole, okay. make, the, make it run. The, the other caveat to that, Paul, would be at the end of the year, every year, his crew is running an inventory so we know what we have on hand for the audit report. Oh, I think it's, I, I think so, it's awesome. It just, we mm -hmm. just got a, a, you know, we just got a heads up, eyes wide open. This is big data stuff, right? We're going to make okay. sure that we're so, conditioning the system to do what we want it to do. Oh, 100%. So 60 days to have it up and running. It's not going to be, I don't expect it to be fully functioning for quite some time because of all the input we have to do it and if we get another natural disaster. But the goal is to work towards that so that we have we have a completion time so where the thing is up and running, you know. Okay. Good. Thank you, Steve. Will there be follow up grants to cover annual costs for the uh, possibly there could be, you know, asset management grants come across so those are always on the lookout. And okay. if that's the case then we could do it. You know, how we haven't really thought or talked too much about it going forward, but you know the packages, if you look in the packet, it's pretty well broken down per, you can almost break it down per department. Yeah. You know, to, and it's not that. Yeah, it's not that much. Team, the, it's not that much the, money. The savings are efficiency. Correct. And when manpower and, and timing and money, efficiency is, is king. All right. Linda. Yeah, my understanding is we have maps. That map can just be quickly Correct. loaded into it. We have asset management plans for water and that, all that information, yes. is that something that they can just move yes. into it or are we going to have to put in put input? Nope. Um, almost all of it can will cross over. So the other part of 
which is a different asset, asset management part that I am working mm -hmm. on with a grant, is some hardware from, from Carlson that we're going to use to map what we don't have. Also, all the hydrants that we, all the hydrants shutoffs, um, gate boxes, mm -hmm. catch basins that we have in town, that mm -hmm. will all get shot. That is all compatible with this. So once we have all the data, mm -hmm. it just, it's, it's a matter of just pulling it over. So and open the guys will be out with, they'll have their tablets mm -hmm. and they can look at the layers. They can look at the water, the sewer, the drainage, the roads, everything. Fantastic. In real time. I'm very pleased. I think we've needed this for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw the same thing we when so um, I had the cable company come out to our uh, neighborhood association. He just flipped open the laptop and he said, see the red line? This is the cable line throughout the entire town of Wolfboro. Yeah. He could see it just like that. Yeah, yep. right. And so you're, you're creating an as-built plan for the entire town. Correct. Yep. It's just a matter of, it, it is two poles, it is going to take some time, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be 2026. It'll be sooner. From your lips. <laughs> He's not giving me a date. I ears. like it. I'm not a date, From your lips <laughs> to <right>. God's ears. <laughs> And you're not going to just like, hey, we can't do anything because we don't have the, the plan ready, right? You're going to keep working at fixing stuff, right? Of course. Thank you. I just want to make sure we're clear. Hey, we never stop a, moving. Could I have a motion? We're still this. planning. There's no time to implement. <laughs> I'll give you a motion. I move that the board approve the IWORQ asset management software for public works, water, sewer, facilities for everything. Second. Third. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good job, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Good job. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Next on our agenda is an appointment. Derek Brown, a follow-up process. Good evening, Derek Brown, Libby Street. Uh, thank you for the time, everyone. Um, I'm going to be joined by Marge Hart um, with follow-on documentation to what I'm providing here tonight. She's also on Libby Street. Um, first and foremost, um, we have a petition that is going to be presented tonight from a bunch of the townspeople, um, following up specifically on the November 15th meeting, select board meeting. I'm going to take my hat off so people can see me better. <laughs> my apologies. Um, on November 15th, 2023, the select board met um, and hosted um, an evening where they had the Chamber of Commerce here. And the Chamber of Commerce spoke specific of some concerns they had with a less than friendly or accommodating town management process for businesses. Two selectmen, Luke Freudenberg and you, Mr. Harriman, spoke about gosh, this is, you know, a place to bring your concerns. If you have some, we'll be happy to help because we're here to serve you. Well, we brought those tonight. So we hope to have some answers and some, some supporting data that you can use to help improve this process. So um, I kept trying to figure out how I can describe this quickly for all without boring too many. And I keep coming back to two words. Selectively reactive is the two words I keep coming back to for the planning department and town management. Many people that are sitting up here tonight were young career people in 1980 in this town. Mr. Harriman is one of them. Mr. Senecal is not here tonight. Uh, looking at the census data, there was 3,900 people in Wolfboro at that time, including me. I was one of them. In 2023, it was about 6,800. And to the best of my knowledge, from what I see, process control, we're still running like a, a 3,800 population town with process control, and we'll figure out a way to wing it and get it done. And we haven't scaled process and control systems. And now we've got a planning department managed by town management that is out of control. There are problems we are all well documented with Green Street, with Forest Road that I'm continuing to look into, and there are significant problems there that much of the town is aware of, and very curious ones. Obviously Libby Street, many other streets in this town. So we were asked to bring forward people 
There's a lot of them. And they're not being heard. But before I get into that direct feedback, I'm going to let, I'm going to let Ms. Hart present the actual data as well. But specific, I'd like to talk about, um, without going back too far, I'll reach back, uh, let's see, the time is 7.50. So I'll go back about 11 hours for the most recent event in the planning department. So we don't have to look back too far in history. This morning, a zoning appeal was presented. It was received at 9.16 this morning for a house at the top of Libby Street that's being demolished. Everybody knows about it, 71 North Main Street. As I understand it, when an appeal is received, a work stoppage is to occur. There has been jackhammering all day long on that property. The planning department knows that appeal is in play, but it continued all day. That speaks to the process I'm talking about. They've got time to stop work according to process. I'm going to go back to those first two words, selectively reactive. They have painted a picture, and I say historically, I'm only going back 10, 15 years. I'm not going to speak beyond that. I'm going to speak to my active time trying to get Libby Street water problems solved. What we see happen is there has been, I'll describe it, a, a climate from the select board of this is how we do things. And that climate is received by the subordinate groups and enacted. So what has come from the planning departments is we're here to help you to the landowners. We're here to help get these things done for you. The real enemy in this process are the planning and zoning boards. You don't want to be going there. We're here to help you get your stuff done that you want to get done. Those boards are there to help the homeowners through the obstacles with the existing ordinances and requirements that may be in the way of doing what they want to do and are they a practical thing that can be seen through with the help of the boards, the guidance of the town officials. They're not there to be the enemy. Don't paint them as that. Don't try to work around them as that because what you've done, and again, we're going to speak to this at the follow-up of the feedback from the, from the uh, petition we did, but embrace them as a good resource and don't paint them as the enemy. But that is what is happening in town management and specifically the planning department. So without further, Marge, this is Marge Hart, also from Libby Street. Thank you, Derek. Um, I haven't met you. I've been in front of the zoning board and the planning boards, but not to selectmen. So here I am. Um, I do have uh, written down and a copy of the petition that I'd like to hand out to all of you so you have that on record and can reference it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I do live at 20 Libby Street, um, and after the Meet the Candidates night, I, Brian had put his uh, information out there and said, if you have a question, give me a call. And uh, the night of the Meet the Candidates, there were two questions that were asked about basically how does the planning department work? And I think Mr. O'Brien, you answered the question and, and Brian did and I still had more questions. So I called Brian and I said, Brian, this is how I understand it works, that the selectmen hire town manager, town manager hires the uh, planning director that hires the code enforcement officer. And he said yes. And um, that conversation was extremely helpful for me because it did verify my understanding of how things work. And then um, at the last meeting, March 5th meeting, Derek uh, stated, and you know, he 
provided information on that. If the town planning director is not doing what he or she is supposed to do, then the town manager who is, or isn't the town manager who is supposed to redirect it. If the town manager correcting the planning director and planning director is ignoring the corrective actions, and where do we go from here, as I understand it, to the select board, and that confirms certainly what uh, Mr. Duche, or Selectman Duche said. So one of the projects um, that Mr. Brown referred to on March 5th is 16 Libby Street. Um, I totally agree with Mr. Brown's assessment about the impact and the fact that this has turned into a civil matter. Um, due to the lack of due diligence on the town manager and planning director. And it's caused neighborhood conflict. This has come up at the meetings. Uh, citizens requiring that they need to hire attorneys. There's town legal fees that are being paid out uh, by the zoning board and planning board working with their attorneys. Property damage, lost wages. Um, you know, this has become a part-time job for many of us to deal with this. And there is an appeal at the state board, uh, housing appeal board now in front of them. We are sixth on the list um, to go in front of them. Uh, the housing appeals board case is Dennis and Marjorie Hart, my husband's back there, uh, versus the town of Wolfboro. The number is 2024-001-PBA. Um, and the grounds of that appeal are pursuant to RSA 66677-4. Um, the remedy is defined by the planning board are ill-defined, arbitrary, and will be an ineffective as they are not based on qualified engineering assessment and therefore are unreasonable. I won't go through any more of the details. It's all out there. It's well known. So my experience um, through this whole thing um, affecting our property, and I've learned that there are other issues out there. Um, and so... I created a petition to find out who's involved and how were they affected by it. And I stand in front of you tonight to present that petition to you. The title is present, uh, Petition to Address Wolfboro's Lack of Enforcement of Towning Building Codes and Ordinances. And I want to make sure that it's clear we're not asking for more ordinances or anything. This is just to enforce the existing ones. So the petition states, we, the concerned citizens and taxpayers of the town of Wolfboro, are demanding that the elected selectmen address the lack of enforcement of town building codes and ordinances by town officials. <clears throat> Our town is currently facing a significant problem where the town officials, including the town manager, town planner, and code enforcement officer, are failing to provide proper guidance, enforcement, and verification, and that's an important word, of the town's building codes and ordinances and sitting selectmen are allowing this to happen. This lack of ownership by the selectmen to drive proper oversight and enforcement is negatively affecting the properties of town residents and businesses, requires civil litigation to resolve the issues that are a result of this lack of enforcement, causing the towns and its citizens to unnecessarily spend money on legal fees and is allowing unapproved activities that go against zoning rules. It is crucial that the elected selectmen take action to address this issue to ensure the proper enforcement of the building codes and ordinances for the well-being and prosperity of our community. So you have the petition in front of you. Um, at the time on my notes, I had 47 or 48, I think, on there. We hit 50 just before this. Um, but some of the comments are very telling. Please enforce the town building codes fairly and equitably. I believe it is crucial to enforce our rules and policies for all residents. The restaurants in the town are not ADA compliant. There is uh, uh, ADA compliant. We have been watching and following a prime example of next to zero response for complaints about construction environmental issues, let alone building practices that are against code. In a home being built next door to us, this high volume, high dollar home is into year three and still has no windows but has electricity. The list goes on about our being ignored when we and fellow neighbors <clears throat> bring problems to the attention of the building and code enforcement officers from the day they pumped out a full excavation with the water running down the road into Lake Winnipesaukee. 
As a native of Wolfboro, longtime former citizen and current property owner and taxpayer, I trust the town's elected officials to their and their designated employees to represent my rights as well as best interests of the town to enforce codes and ordinances and preserve and protect the character of the town that we all love. To the extent that we have failed to do this, I fully support this petition. I completely support this effort. The lack of code enforcement on so many regulations consistently erodes the character of the town and the qualities of town qualities town citizens vote for, lighting, rentals, pro uh, properties that operate as demos, town ordinance should be upheld consistently if we only had a version of Pat Waterman enforcing our codes throughout the town. I have spent thousands, yes thousands, trying to manage the water collected and purposely directed from my neighbor's property onto mine. Two generations of code enforcement officers have come to my house, looked at the situation, said it's illegal, and have done nothing. There are state regulations that the town is not following and enforcing. I'm sure it's not easy running a town. I'd like to think our officers are doing their best, but if not, I hope it gets addressed by them before litigations and we need to enforce our town ordinances that have been vote, voted for by its citizens to uphold and elect uh, our elected officials accountable. So those are pretty strong statements. Um, interestingly, we could have doubled this. People d were afraid of signing for uh, being uh, re retribution by the town is what we heard and Derek will talk about that a little bit more. I can personally say I'm a leader of a multi-million dollar software company that does software for architects and engineers, interestingly enough. And it's my job as a leader, it's a job of all of the leaders of our company to ensure that everybody is doing their job because we are accountable to the board, we're accountable to the industry, and we're accountable to our customers. So based on this, we are asking that these ordinances get um, get up enforced. It's not up to citizens of Wolfboro to do the research to ensure the hired town employees do their job. It's the board's responsibility to ensure the town's budget is also spent on initiatives that are voted in by town uh, citizens, not legal fees, litigating issues and conflicts that could be prevented by this due diligence. As concerned citizens, we ask the board of, select, board of selectmen proactively hold the town manager, planner, and code enforcement officer accountable for providing proper guidance in accordance with the town ordinances, confirmation of compliance and enforcement as the town grows. Failure to do so will continue to cause the town and its citizen to unnecessarily spend time and money on litigation and related activities and creating conflicts between neighbors. We acknowledge that Wolfboro needs additional housing, but we need to openly collaborate as citizens and town management to assure that Wolfboro grows in a controlled manner. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you, Thank you for coming and speaking. Uh, lastly, Derek Brown, uh, just wrapping up on the, uh, the feedback during the petition process. Um, okay. Um, there's been a lot of strong observations pointed out here. Um, in working with the hearts doing this petition, we deliberately did not do it on social media. I made a strong push to not do that because I wanted to talk to the people. I think we did a good job of doing that. And there is a very dark pattern here, I must say, is not fun to talk about. The fear factor is huge here. If I sign this, they will not help me. They is the planning department. That's who the they has continually been referred to. Okay? I have heard, if I bring this out here, they'll attack me on social media. That may get spoken about tonight. 
I have heard, there, there's so many things. Um, I think about the, the November 15th where actually, uh, Brad, uh, Brian, you, you had made a statement about the activities you were trying to get the chamber events to get more people to come. And, and with great enthusiasm, I might add. Um, let me give you what I got out of this petition. Sadly, they don't care because they think you don't care. Not you personally. You don't care anymore. So if you look at voter turnout that's low, look in mirrors. I think you've lost a lot of what you had because you're not enforcing stuff. When we went around with this, with this petition and I talked to people and it was pretty plain, plainly written what we were looking for, there were, a typical response was, oh my gosh, we don't want more codes. Did you read it? We're just saying, just look at what's there. I mean, at one point I made one comment on social media, if you don't, be prepared for the excavator that's going to park next to your house. That's what we're talking about here. Because you aren't aware of what's going on around your house until it's often too late. And now you're in the backpedaling phase trying to get a, an appeal in place that might be too late. Now you've got to fight to try to get that because you didn't ask the question right to the planning department. Oh, we didn't ask for that kind of a drawing. Well, you're asking the homeowners to be planner type expertise to ask the right question. This has got to stop. The animosity level is beyond measure. And that's what you're breeding. And it starts here. Invoke change here and say, this is not acceptable. That's all I have to say. Again, thank you for your time. I just want, Derek, I just want to make a couple comments if I could here, if you oh, want to be up here. Absolutely, um, thank you, sir. Go ahead. I think the right way to put this stuff. The Board of Selectmen, I mean, we do care. I'll just start off with that. Mm -hmm. Board of, this town works under a town manager style government. Mm -hmm. The Board of Selectmen only has say and control on the town manager. We mm -hmm. have no say or control on department heads, departments, right. planning board, zoning board. They're both elected boards, stuff Understood. like that. I will, all I'm going to say, because some of the stuff we get into gets into personnel and stuff, which we are not going to put out on air in the public anyway and stuff. Mm -hmm. All I will say is that conversations have been had here at our level and stuff, and that's as far as I could go with it right now. So I completely understand okay. and respect that. And again, as I think Mrs. Hart illustrated, as I'm illustrating, I'm looking at this from a corporation flowchart. Town manager is hired by the selectmen. Yep, right. The town manager is responsible mm -hmm. for the planning director. If there's a problem in the planning director, it's his challenge to solve that problem. If that doesn't get solved, we have had that personal conversation, me and Mr. Pinio, in September of last year, that if you don't solve this problem, you're going to become the problem. We had that conversation in his office. This is not a new topic. Mm -hmm. I'm just now bringing it here because it was a complete waste of time as a sole proprietor driving up here, listening to this happen at zoning board meetings and planning board meetings, and everybody gets to scoot around and, and not really have quite the authority to do what they'd like to do. So here we are. This is where it starts. Mm -hmm. Invoke change, the, light, the right climate, and let that pass down. Because I think it can change, but it's got to start here. You got to say this is what's the way we're going to do it. If that makes any sense. Any other Linda. question? Sure. Yeah, I'll just say thank you for coming. It, it gives welcome. me plenty to look at, and it's important for us as a board of selectmen to hear from you. So thank you. Thank you for the time. Welcome aboard, Mr. O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> I also thank you for coming in, and I also agree that if we have ordinances and we have state RSA on our books, they need to be enforced. Yeah. Consistently. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, and again, I, it's kind of a sidebar, but you know, there's a lot of chatter around this, around the 71 North Main Street thing, right? This, oh, this beautiful little house comes down and blah, blah. And everybody wants to be mad at the contractor, right? I've been running around saying, don't be mad at the contractor. They're only doing what they're allowed to do. There's codes and code enforcement in place to say, no, you can't do this. Because I know that same contractor couldn't do some of the things he's doing here in Massachusetts where he lives. As a contractor down there, licensed myself, uh uh-uh, you not do. (laughs) That's the rules. Follow the rules. Follow the rules. That's all we're asking. Everybody have the same rules. Mr. O'Brien, I think you had a question. Thanks for recognizing me. Um, so I, I'm really actually glad to be here. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was a selectman. I, I understand that, yeah. And then prior to that, I was on the planning board. Okay. So I got to see, and I'm not doing a compare contrast, I got to see some really quality stuff sitting on the planning board. Mm-hmm. And that guy sitting right over there was a colleague of mine on the planning board. I would agree. <laughs> Real quality stuff. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't go point by point with you because I really don't have the background, mm-hmm. but as I'm listening to this, I'm, there's a little voice in my head saying, if, if a tenth of that is true, we're better than that. We really are. It's a great town. Um, and and your, your comment about role confusion um, echoes with me a little bit. And and that's something we can fix. I agree. You know, it's, I, in fact, I, I'm reminded of, a, uh, not to give speeches, I'm reminded of uh, when, when we were parents, our kids played soccer, and, you know, they'd all kind of scrum around the ball. You see this human scrum going down the field, and the coach would be on the sidelines going, play your positions. And the kids didn't know that, and all of a sudden the ball would squirt out and somebody would kick it into the goal and it'd all feel bad or something like that. We're, we're, we we, we got to chew on this a little bit, get Understood. better at it. I, I did, and I don't want to comment about this uh, um, administrative appeal. Um, uh, I'm aware of it. Oh. Oh, can I interrupt right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I'm not looking for a comment on that no, I'm appeal not at all. It's no, the I'm process. Not. Yeah, yeah. That I'm aware of it. Yeah. Um, and the question I have, and I haven't gotten an answer because I haven't asked it yet, um, is, you know, when an administrative appeal shows up, I suppose there could be a stop right now. I'm not sure I understand how that mechanism works from a statutory point of view, mm-hmm. because there's a little another little thing inside my head that says if we really want to screw up the, any town, we just file appeals, just lay them in there, and you could stop the town dead in its tracks. True, bad True. term. You could stop it cold, mm-hmm. and so I don't know how that whole thing works. Right. Um, but I'll tell you what I do know is it's a single-family residence. Mm-hmm. They have, uh, I think people have the right to replace their home on the same footprint they had. You, you can rebuild your house by right. I wouldn't argue that one minute. You and I are Massachusetts guys. I just had to do that. Yeah. So I, I just don't understand what's going on there. And I'm not being critical. I'm just saying I'd really... No, me, and, and again, I only... Well, chew I on only, that one. Yeah, and just, sorry to interrupt, but yes. And the only reason for bringing that up was to bring it up only as even today... We have to challenge the process being used improperly. Yeah. If you, yeah. and again, since you're coming back on board, and again, I do genuinely welcome you back. You. Yeah. Um, if you get time to look at zoning and planning board meetings from May periodically, where you'll see me or Audrey Klein, yeah. the hearts involved yeah. over May through October of last year, you'll see the spirit exactly of what I'm referring to, because it has nothing to do with that property. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll shut up after this. I was, yeah. I was out of town a lot over the past couple of years, no worries. and I would find myself late at night in a very nice hotel after having a nice dinner, either watching Wolfboro planning, zoning, oh or select board <laughs> meetings. So I had absolutely no life. <laughs> and I, but I watched the movies, right? And okay. uh, I, I think I understand yeah. some of the dynamics you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate Thank you. the caring. Thank you. All set? Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, next on our agenda, update to the Josiah Brown scholarship application. Um, so there was some conversation about wanting to add uh, some additional documents to that. Uh, that's identified in the highlight of yellow um, to include a FAFSA award letter um, for your consideration on this uh, application going forward. And the rest of it's still the same as it always was, correct? I believe that is correct. Yep. Linda. Yeah, um, I <clears throat> was one of the who wanted to look at some changes for um, the uh, application, and I am, I am pleased with number seven, which added the FASTA form, and it gives some parameters, and I think that helped. Yeah, I was know. speaking with Amy about it. Um, because I said to her, I said, we need a mechanism to make sure that, because um, it is a need-based scholarship, we have to make sure that the need is, is there. Um, and, it, and it happens to work very, very well because uh, Amy is our welfare agent and she happens to, be, she happens to have children that are uh, going to be going through this process. So she understands the current FAFSA, how it works, how it's applied, how you get uh, grant letters and whatnot, so we're in a perfect position to, to institute this. So would you like to have a motion to have Ad this added into this uh, application? Adopt as amended. Yep. I'll, mo I'll make a motion <clears throat> to um, uh, accept the amended guidelines for administration of the Josiah W. Brown Scholarship Fund. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Next on our agenda, discussion rules of procedure, code of conduct, and committee assignments. We kind of announced earlier the committee assignments that anyway, we would be postponing till April 3rd. Um, do we want to look at the uh, rules of procedure and code of conduct this evening, would you like to include that with our moving this all over to April 3rd? What's the board's wish? I think we I should think table so. it in case Dave has input. I, yep. I think so too. Okay. What I would do, what I would ask is between now and then, because we have the list of uh, assignments from the previous year for all of our uh, committees and boards that we're on to review that and kind of have that in our heads for our next meeting to um, update the list and because uh, there will obviously be some changes with the uh, new member here, so. I would just add as well, um, when you go through the rules and procedures, um, we did have this reviewed by legal, updated, yeah. um, and those are in the blue bullets. Oh, oh thank you. Can I, uh, uh, just something to think about for, for this, when we have this conversation, something to think about, please. Um, I asked Jim uh, to, to consider, we should have an org chart be able to go on the town website and be able to, you know, figure out who's who, right? It would be great. Just a functional org chart. It doesn't necessarily have to be a names on it. Just a functional organization listing. So, because I've tried to navigate through it, and I and I know things are changing. We're pretty good, but um, I I was even as an insider, quote unquote, I uh, was having problems figuring out things there. So that would be good. In my weekly notes, I'll send what I have developed to this point to the board. Um, so that you have it for review. I, I will send what I have to this point on that to the board in my weekly notes, and then we can add it as a discussion item at okay. a future board meeting. Yep. Linda? Yeah, and I, I know Amy um, kind of sent, sent an email out that told what we had in this selectman's handbook that definitely needs to be updated. I right. did it in 2021. And this, Paul, you'll remember, I think this little baby flow chart, what is and is not a meeting. Only if I can take credit for it. Yeah, okay. it was you who brought that. And we also have um, municipal committee chair guidelines. And I'd like to see if we can get that in our handbook and out to our chairs. So while we're piling on, um, the... Uh, <laughs> The RSA that talks about the uh, responsibilities of town manager. Um, if I look at the if I look at the website, um, uh, it it I think it's out of date. It would be nice to just pick up the RSA. I think it was a 36 or whatever it is, and just 
park it right over there. Um, that would be good. And, th and, and again, just from my learning, this track changes. This is being proposed by Correct. council? Council? Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other business? Oh, I have Linda. one. Yeah. Um, last week I brought the sidewalk survey, um, and that's being put out by the ad hoc uh, sidewalk committee. Yep. And I would like to see if we could get that on the homepage of the website. It has a quick turnaround, um, April uh, 1st, and it asks you questions about what you would like to uh, see about, about the sidewalk. Um, it was mainly um, uh, put out for businesses, but we changed it. And do you want to be able to put tables, chairs, benches on the sidewalk, yes or no? Uh, do you not want to see on the sidewalk? And they can list. So there are a lot of good questions. That is getting the feedback from the public before this uh, committee moves on. Thank you. We will try to get a link to that tomorrow. Any other business? We move on. Committee reports. Uh, we'll start down here with Brian. Um, we had an excellent EDC meeting. Um, the EDC created a subcommittee for housing. Um, we talked a lot about um, different events, Lake Winnipesaukee Day and, and events coming up. Um, they did table a, um, they were gonna have a, um, a session on housing, but some of the players um, backed out, so that, that was tabled. But the EDC is going in a great direction. And um, did we create a second subcommittee also with that? No, that's the only one I remember. Just, just the housing yeah. subcommittee, mm -hmm. which is which is a good a good thing, so that we can dedicate more time to the housing needs of the the, the folks in Wolfboro. That's it. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. I had uh, this morning. I had Wolfboro Community TV board meeting mm -hmm. um, last night. We had a planning board meeting. Mm -hmm. And on, uh, it was a Monday, we had a Wolf for Waters uh, committee meeting. Oh, sure. And there were a oh, couple sure. other meetings I've had with Jim over the past week or so here, too. I, enough of them, I can't remember what they were all about, so. Mm -hmm. but, but many meetings, so. Linda. Yeah, um, just after our March 6th meeting, which almost seems a long time ago, on March 7th, Jim and I went to the quarterly chamber meeting, and mm -hmm did a presentation on some of the Warren articles and operating budget that the uh, chamber wanted to hear more on. Um, I was at the EDC meeting with uh, Brian. I had a Friends of Pop Whalen meeting. Um, we had an ad hoc sidewalk committee. Um, I had the library trustees meeting. We all attended the election. At diff doing different things. Um, Wolfboro Water um, is um, going to uh, work at uh, reviewing town projects, and we went over what passed and what failed, mm -hmm. and, and how we might want to have the town move forward. And as we did, uh, talked about uh, stormwater, we talked about the need to keep on educating the public. It's not just the people who live um, on the t near the lake or have a lake house, but you all live in the watershed. So what we do with our stormwater runoff, what we use is fertilizer and bringing nutrients uh, down in our stormwater is important. So we're going to put more emphasis on public education, so hopefully we'll have uh, some presentations here at the um, selectmen's meeting. And that's all I have. Paul. I ain't on no committees. <laughs> but I have, um, in the past week, I've had a lot of people just, just send me emails, want to meet. I met with the chief and uh, the chairman of the uh, police commission. Uh, that, was a good, that was a good conversation, at least I thought it was. That was a good conversation. I got a chance to, uh, I, I watched with great interest the school funding uh, juggernaut that we're gonna have to deal with. So I, I visited with uh, uh, one of the state representatives this morning. We talked about that whole process and what's going on. That's kind of interesting. Um, I had dinner with Luke last night. 
Committee meetings, committee meetings. I'm yeah. sorry. I had dinner with Luke last night, and it was great. Um, and it was a great exchange of information for me. So that's my committee reports. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Town manager's report. Yeah, just a, a couple of items. Uh, first of all, to answer Suzanne's question, it's 40 years. It's not 40 plus five. <laughs> it's 40. It's not 38. Not 39. It's 40. It's 40. Okay. Um, and secondly, uh, I just want to make a statement uh, regarding the default budget. Um, there's a lot of conversation which is taking place mm -hmm. regarding the default budget and what the impact on town operations and events will be uh, through the year 2024. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to sit here and say as town manager, I'm working diligently with the department heads and the goal going forward is to make the impact on the citizens, the um, programs, and everything that Wolfboro has to offer be as minimal as possible. Um, if people are hearing contrary to that, uh, I would appreciate it if you brought that to my attention. Um, but our goal here is to keep everything as stable as we possibly can with uh, minimal negative impact to our citizens and visitors. That's all I have. Thank you. Questions from the press? Is Alyssa with us? Got logged out. We can, can we go back to that and do public input? Oh well, right no. Now. Let's get her go ahead and see if we can get her right back on quick. I don't see her on. Okay. I don't see her on. Okay. Uh, Christian Press, public input limited to three minutes per person, up to 15 minutes. So go ahead, Sarah, we'll let you go first. Then John will come up next. Hi, I'm Sarah Silk. I'm Household Hazards Waste Site Quick. Coordinator, am I close enough to that? I don't Try know. that. There you go. See, he's okay. turned it up a little bit up there, too. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things that have come up. Thank you, Tom. Just need a little expertise here from another department. Thank you so much. Um, there's a couple of things that have come up uh, recently from hazardous waste that I think that the Board of Selectmen needs to know about and the public needs to know about. One thing that we're going to be giving some uh, information out to the public about hopefully through the newspaper soon is that we have our regular season the same we've had since 2003 third Saturday of the month in May right straight through the third Saturday in October however there are some changes this year we will not be accepting medications as we usually do in Wolfboro in June and August and in Alton at one of our little satellite collections in September. The reason for that is that both of the member communities, Alton and Wolfboro, have boxes at the lobbies of their public safety buildings. Wolfboro is open 24 seven and Alton is open when their police department is open. We have had a 15% jump in the cost from our waste haulers in year one of our new three-year contract. It will be an additional 10% year two, an additional 10% near three. It's the highest, I've been doing this 35 years, it's the highest jump we have ever had. Lakes Region Planning Commission got a 40% jump in theirs. It's just the way things are going. We, there's not much we can do about it. We try to do the best we can. So there is no alternative to get rid of hazardous waste. There is an alternative that's safe for the people in the communities to get rid of their medications. And as the lobby has been open, except for a little COVID, um, our numbers and the amount we've been collecting has been dropping somewhat. However, the cost, we've never changed the cost, God love them, of our pharmacists, but the cost for the police department, we have to have two, has gone up. So the cost per household coming in does not warrant our continuing it because there is an alternative for medications. People will probably come. We will send them to the proper places. The, um, the next thing is um, the, um, there is 
HB 1504. It's a paint care bill that went before the House. I've been following it. I, I went to the um, public hearing on February 6th, work sessions on the 13th of February, the 20th of February, the 5th of March, and the 13th of March. Paint Care is a program that's sponsored through the manufacturers of architectural paint. That's housing paint. It's not special formulation paint like automobile refinishing or something like that. There are uh, 19 states plus Washington, D.C. that already are participating in this program. It's been around for several years. Massachusetts, Missouri, Maryland, and New Hampshire have bills in front of them currently. And um, how this works is the manufacturers support it. We accept oil-based paint at hazardous waste because it's flammable. We do not accept latex paint because it is not. The disposal for latex paint is mixed at 50-50 with the cheapest kitty litter you can find and drop it off at solid waste. That's kitty litter that kitty never saw and it just goes in and it is additional weight that we pay to pay by the ton to get rid of. It goes someplace to a landfill where it just takes up space forever. It's the Environment and Agriculture Committee at the House that's looking at this. They are very, very sensitive about items going into landfills that don't need to be there. Then we have um, the concern with Department of Environmental Services originally took no position on the bill. The committee originally wanted to make an interim study, which would make it go away for a year. They actually passed it ought to, the whole House will have to vote on it, but it came out of committee ought to pass. DES took no position on it originally because it had another position in it and they are shorthanded already with hazardous waste and other things in the solid waste departments. They did get in touch, there's a Tim Prospert that is now in charge of household hazardous waste and he has this, he's an administrator and the administrator above him, Todd Piskovich, uh, did both start coming to these hearings. And they had concerns that what would happen is all the paint stores would sell the paint. It would be approximately a dollar per gallon additional charge to help cover disposal. The paint stores that sell paint, solid waste, hazardous waste, those type of places would accept back waste paint, latex, and oil-based paint. DES was concerned because household hazardous waste, oil-based paint would make the person collecting it, it's a product until somebody collects it, it would make the collecting entity a small and or large quantity generator depending on what happened and that's all kinds of paperwork and special conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So I talked with um, Tim Prospert and then <laughs> and Todd Piskovich was there at the hearings, I suggested they call it a universal waste. A universal waste is a waste that they have special conditions if it comes from households. For example, and some of them are very toxic. For example, antifreeze, instantly kill your pets and make your children very, very sick. Uh, mercury containing devices, it, it's d horrible damage to children's brains. This includes like your CFLs and all those kind of things, and there are other items, many of which are more hazardous than the flammability pro properties of oil-based paint. Uh, one of the women, Representative Murray, Megan Murray, was on a landfill subcommittee and took the ball and ran with it, and they have compromised so that there will be rule changes through an amendment to the original bill that would allow this paint to become a universal waste and make it possible for the paint sellers and maybe solid waste as well, obviously, as hazardous waste to collect it. You collect it. I spent two days in Vermont last summer looking into this program. Burlington, Vermont collects it at their hazardous waste place. They actually have someone because they re re recycle it, but 
at a high level. They check every can of paint. If it's good, you have a drum of red, green, yellow, purple, blah, blah, blah. They remix 55 gallons at a time. They add mildecide, other chemicals to make it like new paint. They sell it for $11 a gallon. They have different prices for five gallon and two gallon cans. This allows people that need to paint their homes to keep them sound and to keep water out and to keep them housed to do it. When you compare it, some retail paint is 55 to $75 a gallon. At this point, it's important to me, which is as a hazardous waste person with a long series of years working on this, because paint doesn't cost me the most amount of money for a 55 gallon drum. It's about <laughs> half the cost of pesticide, solid or pest liquid, but it's the largest quantity. I'm not f totally familiar with my new price, but the other way we send out paint is 101 gallon cans on a pallet. That's over $1,300 plus a recovery fee of 13% on top of that. We have had a $200,000 amount for grants from 1990, when I got into the program, I don't know what it was prior to that, up until now. $200,000 for the entire state of New Hampshire. We get the second highest amount per capita because we have a permanent site, 22 cents. I had a $57,000 bill to my waste hauler last year. I'm waiting for a check for $2,666. We need help. The population from 1990 to 2024, just, just look at the COVID in the last four or five years even, has grown astronomically. The prices have grown astronomically. We need help somewhere. If the paint care program passes, I will no longer pay a penny for the oil-based, and the guys at the top of the hill in solid waste will not be paying by the ton to get rid of kitty litter. So I'm really hoping this bill passes. It has to be voted on by the total house. Crossover day is tomorrow, the 21st. Today's the 20th, right? Right. Okay. The 21st, and it goes to the Senate. Then they have committees, and they have to vote as well. Call all your representatives and the, your senators and encourage them because they certainly are not inclined to give us more money through the grant program. And this would greatly relieve, you know, default budgets. Both Alton and Wolfboro got one. It won't help me next year. It probably won't be in place until 25 to 26 if it passes. But it's really important that, you know, people support this. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I had was. A little problem. Let me just pass this out. Sir, do you know the bill number off here? Do you know the bill number that's in the house? HB1504. Okay. No pressure, but just so you know, you're already at about 10 minutes here. Oh, okay, and we're okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, what you have here is um, the uh, solid waste, that one side of the solid waste new brochure, which uh, Wayne McBride gave Dale when he went to the dump last Saturday. It's the first time I saw it. And um, I have been in touch with Steve, and it's, well, two Steves, Stedman and Randall. And um, there were some things on here which I guess, according to the information I've been given, perhaps has been in error for some time. If you look at the item that says bulky furniture and follow it across to where it, the column that says no, it says it's recyclable a hazardous waste. 35 years, never took bulky furniture, never plan on it. Construction demo debris, same thing, recyclable or hazardous waste. Never take it at hazardous waste, don't plan on it. So that's an error, it may have been there before. Um, then down at the uh, bottom, there were a couple of comments. One is, has to do with asterisks, uh, and the bottom one was a triple asterisk, 
and it said Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day held each year on the fourth Saturday of July. We haven't participated in the Lakes Region Planning Commission since 2002. So um, I did stop by this morning. I had to copy s some information for hazardous waste at the town hall, and I picked up one of the flyers that they have um, by where you pay your electric bill, and they have crossed off with magic marker everything after household hazardous waste. That's, that'll be very helpful. Unfortunately, I think there's like five cases of these. Um, but the other thing that does need to be added is where it says waste oil, you go across to no, and it says contaminated oil, antifreeze, gas, or paint. That's where the three star asterisk should have been the only place because hazardous waste takes contaminated oil antifreeze and it might be more exact to say gasoline because we don't take propane and we do take paint. So it's, it's would be really nice if maybe we could get the Board of Selectmen and the department heads to have a policy where if you're going to talk about another department's program, somebody would check with someone on that department? Just a thought. Yeah, and I guess I got looking at this tonight, uh, and I guess one of the questions I would have for you, Sarah, is um, there's no liaison from the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to your joint board. Should there be? No, it's supposed to be the town manager. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I understand that, but my plate's a little full as well. No. Okay, well, if, if somebody from the Board of Selectmen would like to come down, I, I, I have to go every meeting. So I'm always there. And the town administrator from Alton attends, he's the voting member, and then he has a Board of Selectmen that comes as a liaison. I say we could talk about that when we do our assignments here. Yeah. If we want to add a representative to the board from the Board of Selectmen to fill in the spot where, you know, one Jim less. can't be, so... Yeah, one last thing and then I'll go yeah. sit down. Okay. Anybody that has any hazardous waste pamphlets from last year, toss them out. We have new brochures coming. They are currently at the printers because our price for people from away had to change to reflect that 15% jump. So anybody, all the departments have have them when we make a new one in case someone answers the phone and gets a question. So, and I, I'm pretty sure there are some downstairs. So if someone on the staff could be responsible for just making sure that they all get thrown away so that I don't have misinformation out there from my department as we inadvertently just had from solid waste. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Steve Randall, Public Works again. Um, I know, no, I know. So to her point, um, there was an error on there that I missed in the editing on the, uh, the July date that's been scrubbed from the town website, not the solid waste website. Um, that will be taken care of tomorrow. Um, I believe at this point, almost every one that we have in cases that has been crossed off all five cases, five, six cases. Um, where there is some confusion, and I don't necessarily think this is the place for this, but this upper portion of this is actually for solid waste, not hazardous waste. So we take waste oil right. up there. So if you follow that across, the reason that says <laughs> contaminated oil, antifreeze, and paint is because they don't. So this actual block is for solid waste, and the other page had the hours for the household hazardous waste. So we actually didn't have a breakdown. Somewhere along the lines, we added this and I didn't catch it. Yep. So that's, that's been, like I said, that's been scrubbed from the town. Yep. That'll get scrubbed from the solid waste website. And Steve and the crew have edited the, out the files. Right, but what, I, what I'm trying to say, Sarah, is this isn't has household hazardous waste page. I know what you're can saying. I, can I have you guys kind of work on this out? Somewhere else. Somewhere else, rather than... Thank you. John. 
John Thurston, uh, thank you for having me tonight. So uh, I'm here on a couple of issues tonight. Uh, first is a personal, and uh, then I have some uh, observations from the meeting tonight. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've had a, uh, a neighbor, number five, Edgewood Terrace, named Mr. Dan Miles, who's wrote letters to the zoning board, the select board, and to the planning board, saying I was colluding with the town and I was getting preferential treatment. I'm no longer a member of the planning board, and I'd like to read a letter that I gave to Kathy Barnard. To my fellow board members and to the community of Wolfboro that, served, that elected me for three three-year terms, it has been a privilege to be a representative to the planning board and to the town of Wolfboro. Working on the nine subcommittees over the nine years has been very fulfilling for me and I know I made a positive impact while challenging others to see things from a perspective they are not familiar with. I do recognize that I have knowledge that others will want me to contribute, and they have been engaging me over the last couple of months or so. I have been happy to share my thoughts and will continue to do so. My future plans over the last year have been turned upside down, and it has been a very difficult period. I do wish for a more tranquil future and a more graceful period to focus on my personal well-being. My contribution to the town of Wolfboro and to the great people of this community will always be appreciated and cherished. I wish you all well, and I thank you for supporting Steve Webster as my future replacement. Thank you, John Thurston. So tonight, I have a couple of, of uh, things I'd like to go over, and first off was Mr. Zardi. Uh, Mr. Zardi talked about a request for volunteers for a citizen, uh, but gave no information on how someone would make that contact to Mr. Zardi, so maybe he could come up and, and uh, or give some input on how that would happen. And uh, also, uh, I think for the community, uh, what community members might like want to hear is uh, how the community will be uh, will be doing how he will be doing stuff for the community for his emergency management plan like how what what will they benefit from his conversation uh, uh, the the other comment I, I have is uh, uh, about the water and the and the well situation uh, if, if you're a private uh, homeowner and you have your own well, you're not a, uh, a water payer. So if the town has a, a well situation and they want to uh, have the, the rate payers for the wells, uh, for the water system, be the only ones to pay for that, that's... That, that should come out of the general fund. The people who are on the water system shouldn't be the ones to have to pay for the town to create a well for the beach area. Everybody in the town should be able to pay for that one instead of uh, w water payers. Um, uh, the, the Mr. Randall talks about a surety bond for street damage fee. Would he be coordinating with the planning department when projects are approved through the planning department? I, I, the approval process would require the public works representative to watch over and pay for that oversight. Uh, over the years past, I can, I can say that since Matt Sullivan, there has been no oversight from, from that perspective. And, uh, uh, and, if, and in the past, uh, the town hired Ty and Bond to inspect the process, but I know that hasn't happened uh, as of the last planner that we have currently right now. So uh, I know that there was a discussion with uh, Kathy Barnard, myself, and the vice chairman to uh, engage the uh, planner to get him to use tie and bond to make those uh, engineered uh, inspections, but I can attest that hasn't been happening. And uh, so if, if, um, 
Mr. Randall was going to uh, engage the, the process of, of, a, a, of being the director to manage the projects, uh, how, would the, how would the town get the fee and what, the, what, what would be that fee for, for that cost? And to that point, I think when we talked about the facilities manager and him saying each department head would have a, uh, a bubble to go into and then, you know, basically what's happening is, the way I see it is, Mr. Randall would now be the facilities manager and would be doing two jobs in one. I think we talked about uh, a facilities manager that would be the oversight of that bubble in its entirety so that uh, it wouldn't be Mr. Randall's job job to uh, be the oversight person for all these uh, 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 management issues. Just my observation. Thank you. Thank you, John. Marge Hart. Um, I'll try to make this quick. Um, so last night it was at the planning board meeting and there was discussion about the road regulations and that coincided with um, safety issues that we're seeing on Libby Street. Here we are again. Um, 71 North Main has a big fence around it and that big fence is making that already small road even smaller. Um, and I was looking at the road construction regulations last night that were being discussed and for a street, and I have copies of this that I can give you, um, estimated 120 vehicles per day. Uh, the minimum pavement width is 20 feet and we're at 14 feet. And now we've got the fence around. So what's happening is if you're going up into Libby Street, People have to go in reverse down so you can make room for each other. And if it's the other way, somebody else is having to back up. This construction project's going to be going for quite a while. There is no way people are going to be able to back up into Main Street in the summer. It's just going to be a nightmare. Um, so we're asking if we can make that Libby Street, uh, one-way street going in from North Main and going out to Mill Street. Um, <clears throat> and actually, coincidentally, my neighbor just said that he went to the police department and they didn't really hear him. My husband spoke to the Carroll County Sheriff, <clears throat> the Wolfboro Police Department, and this was like sending people to people. Uh, the Wolfboro Police Department sent him to the planning department, sent him to public works, and then public works sent to the selectmen. So here I am again. <laughs> uh, they said that this is a selectman issue. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a public hazard and there's gonna be accidents that are gonna happen. You can't get two cars in Libby Street. Um, the other thing is the fence is overhanging the sidewalk on North Main Street and there's a, quite a hill there. So that's a public hazard also because in order to get around to walk on the sidewalk, you have to walk off the side, either in the street or trying to go down. I just did that several times, and that's a very uh, well-trodden path for people going out and doing walking around. So I very much would like to have the select board please take a look at this and please consider making Libby a one-way street so we can have safety for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I just have one. Linda. You're one-way forever or just while this construction? I wouldn't complain about forever at all. I'd love that. Okay, I just wanted that yeah. clear. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Coming out on Libby Street, down on Mill Street is dangerous too. You can't see around the corners. Thank you. It's tall. Hi, Bobby Bedbin. Um, four things on my mind. One, Sarah Silk, thank you. And I just want to say something off of a comment she made about not putting things in landfills that we don't need to. I watch these meetings for 15 years now. And Jim, I am about to commend you for bringing your own reusable cup. 
meeting after meeting, I watch our leaders show up with cups they're throwing away. So I'm going to challenge you to come to your next board meeting with reusable cups. One, two, um, I am about to feel like Jacob Marley and the ghost of Christmas past or something here, but I think that Derek Brown and um, Marge Hart, uh, I will just scream as a warning. I uh, came before town for two years and 10 days over uh, a Great Dane fiasco doghouse that is still haunting me and I know is still haunting our town. We have a $35, $35 million lawsuit against the town. I, don't, I don't think so, no. I think those had been clear. Has that out. gone away? There's I no lawsuit so. to my knowledge. No. Okay, I so don't know of any either. That's, that's gone out. But we know how much money we spent on that because we did not enforce our code. So I take a good listen. Because I, I think they're giving you a warning um, on that. Um, three, I just want to point out that for 15 years, or a little more, uh, I have watched these meetings, and I have never once heard the board vote against a manifest. And I, I'm going to put out a challenge that the board actually looks at those things before you bulk vote on your manifests moving forward. I believe the $2.7 million dollars could have been caught, uh, amongst other things that could be caught, if just can put that challenge out there too. And um, number four, I just have a question about Pop Whalen. Did I hear correctly we're only at 3% of our revenue for the year earlier? We don't get to see what you're seeing. So was that I, on the sheet? I think what she said, I think it may have been 3% uh, uh, was the revenue we had collected in the town. Okay, but okay, cause, and she said that the um, tax bills hadn't gone out. Okay, that so for the it. enterprise fund on POP, the sheet she 80%. gave you? You're at 80% 80, 80 revenue. At, at the December closing report? No, 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 I'm talking about right now, the first. Oh, right now. February. Yeah. She said we're a month behind, that they yeah. run a month behind, and I think okay. we're right. It's just we're in, our, we're in our really big part of the season where we should have probably 50% of our revenue. Uh, so we're at five, and that's as of wow. um, the, the February, end of February. No, that's the end of, uh, if it's a February. It's the end of January. So it would be the end of January. Right. What we've collected is the yes. end of January. Wow, we're we're pretty far behind. If our if you know our big months are you know really October, November, December, January. Well, that was all in last year. That's year's last year. year. Okay, okay. We take, over. We're starting in January. Okay, and then I just want to point out one more thing. So, so um, if, I, if I could, Bobby, uh, yeah. just roll the tape back. Jim is meeting with the director tomorrow, and that's no. not just oh shit, we're going to meet with the director yeah. tomorrow. Um, uh, the, the question that was asked, and I, I think you heard that, is it's not where we've been, it's where we're going to land. And, uh, you, know, you know, you should reasonably expect, we should reasonably, we all should reasonably expect to, to have an idea as to where we land Pop Whalen. The short number is it's $400,000 in revenue mm -hmm. that should come into the town to offset $400,000 mm -hmm. of cost. All right? And that doesn't include any operating leverage that says, you know, they can accrue money for capital. We're just trying to get them to break even, as, if what I understand is correct. So I think Jim is trying to figure out with Chuck, and Linda punched it up too, saying we need to, we need to see the programs, we need to mm -hmm. see the calendar, we need to see the activities, and, and that will give us an opportunity to, to look out into the future. I couldn't agree with you more, which is where I'm about to go on this. Oh, okay. Um, first, I just wanted to ask, did we, did we pay for the locker rooms in advance and now we're waiting to be paid back? That is correct. Wow, thought we learned our lesson there. Okay, um, I noticed um, Select Member Murray, when you gave your committee reports, you gave a committee report stating you met with friends of Pop Whalen. So last year, we did have before the voters a recreation, potential recreation commission, which I understand there's a difference between a commission and a committee. This may be a really good time for our board to sit down and say, it is time for a recreation committee. 
Friends of Pop Whalen are not a committee. It should not be in your committee report. And we should have an actual citizen committee that oversees our recreation department. As someone who has worked in the field and has had a committee and a commission and everything else working with me, my recreation department was so much stronger and was so much better because we engaged the citizens to sit down and help with our recreation department. So I guess that's three challenges. Linda. Yeah, I, I took the seat, uh, a board of selectmen seat on the Friends of Pop. That's how I went on, that was the role. I started stepping down when I started raising money for them, mm -hmm. and I felt that was a conflict. Mm -hmm. But I'm still part of that a board of selectmen seat, and if I wasn't on the board, they would want another selectman. So just to make it clear. Okay, but if we're going to have a recreation committee, let's have a recreation committee because Friends of Pop are not a committee and when they're in your committee report, then all we're doing is we're focusing on an organization. And many of us in this room can agree, sitting on Friends of Pop, we don't have people from, say, other hockey leagues sitting on there, other than Back Bay, or we don't have maybe curling on there, or we don't have pickleball on there, we don't have... have Friends right. of Abenaki. I, I will make any so, more. I will no longer. So I'm just going to challenge you. That's Maybe fine. this is the time that we actually look at recreation in our town and and have the citizens help us. Thank you. No problem. Hi, Audrey Klein. Um, except for the uh, Brad Harriman, who's the representative to the planning board, I don't know how many of you watched uh, the Tuesday night meeting when I spoke, but uh, what Marge Hart just brought up uh, is just a small thing, but it does really speak to the process I was talking about at 71 Libby Street, that the, the issuance of the building permit should have in already included a plan for the fencing, uh, and if the fencing was going to be on public property, which I believe it is, then the departments should have had conversations about it, and that should have all been in place before the building permit was issued and before the contractor went on the site. So that, um, besides the fact that I'm really concerned that this contractor is actually going to be working potentially in the town, right of not just the right of way, but on their land, um, these kinds of issues are are just not getting looked at, um, and and. That was kind of the point of my discussion last night. It's uh, Jody Person. Um, I wasn't going to talk about Pop Whalen, but after hearing Bobby say about a recreation committee, just quickly, I'd, that sounds like a great idea. I mean, I, it, there has to be some more oversight over this Pop Whalen and you know, the recreation department. And uh, that's all I get to say about that. And two quick other things is I talked to Brian about the throw ring and the rope is missing at the town docks. I believe both of them. They've been missing since the middle of last summer. And I've talked to several people and I'm sure Brian was gonna get back to me. I just talked to him the other day, but I wanted to get on record that stuff like that. We spent all that money on those docks and I, it just, uh, it cringes me when I watch kids running on the docks or old couples walking on the docks and there's no throw rings in those holders. Um, I just, I, I think that's something by next Friday, they, there should be throw rings in those holders. I just, I really think so. I don't know if it's something I should do and then get reimbursed or, but it really needs to be done. And then third, uh, just really, quick on the barge situation down at um, the Libby launch. Mm -hmm. Not for this year, but I'm wondering if there's some dialogue that can start about maybe doing specific times for the barges, like 10 to three or something like that, Monday through Friday and not on the weekends. I'm not saying right now, jumping into anything, but maybe get a dialogue going. So, I mean, I go down, and some of the barge guys are great. They're waiting for somebody to come with a truck with stuff yeah, on right, it. Right, right. They'll pull their poles up. They'll back out. They'll let me launch. There's others that'll just sit there with their feet up on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't, you know, I, I, when they're loading, I sit and wait. I wait when they're loading, and it's not a big deal. But, you know, yeah. I thought maybe we could have a etiquette 
etiquette ramp etiquette for maybe next year's permits or something i don't know maybe some dialogue that's all all right thank you jody something new i hope sure, sure, something new I and short um this is just for jim um i i am not going to take my check for budget committee i would like to put it towards the welfare i know it's not a lot but it's still 250 more that's already closed that year's closed Hi, Ann Blodgett. Um, I'd like to um, I'd like to thank Sarah. I'd like to make a little public service announcement. Drop your pharmaceuticals at the police department. Do not flush them down the toilet. They'll end up in your drinking water. Okay, that's that's the, that's the public service thank announcement. I'd also like to thank um, the Hearts and the Browns for summarizing. Um, taking action, living through, paying for lack of support that the town has given them through the planning department. I also have um, had neighbor issues. I've dealt with them on my own. I haven't sued them. The town has said it's a civil matter. I got no support, no response. Um, I, got, I got put in the middle of something. And I am not the only one. So many people, not only the ones who signed that, but I can think of many, many more who felt very pit against their neighbors. Maybe it's a lighting issue. Maybe it's a stormwater runoff issue. Maybe it's a noise issue, a short-term rental issue. But there are, there are ordinances that are not being enforced that are in black and white. And I just want to underscore all the people who signed that and the ones who didn't. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public input? Chief. If it pleases the board, I think I can address Mr. Thurston's question very quickly. We didn't have approval to move forward with the volunteers until tonight when you voted. I expect in the next week or so we'll put together a advertisement, for lack of a better term, asking for probably a letter of interest and move forward from there with a deadline or two but no i didn't want to jump the gun and put something together until we got the nod to yep. move forward all right thanks thank you anything else suzanne okay <laughs> i would entertain a motion to go into non-public uh, so to go into non-public all those in favor uh, yes, yes, yes 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 thank you everybody thanks